<laughs> hey everybody, welcome to another episode. I am Michael Petro. Welcome back after missing you last week. Uh, this week on the show, uh, we've got me, we've got Emily Clark without an E, and her husband Dan Bond comes on the show. Big fan of the show. We figured, why not let this guy come on? Either I'm a marriage counselor for an afternoon or I'm not. I can assure you that everybody got along. We all put our keys in the fishbowl at the end of the episode. No, I'm totally kidding. That did not happen. Dan did, but me and Emily were just like, you're fucking perverted. Point is, that's who's on the show. What are we talking about this week? Well, Pete Davidson uh, did a sketch on SNL called Short Ass Movies that made me think, there's got to be some really good short ass movies out there. So we picked our favorites, talked about why they're so great, how you can pack more into a buck 40, hour 40, hour hour 30, somewhere around there sometimes than, than you can in two and a half hours. The, the history of how the movie has changed in length, time length over time. We also do our favorite monologues and read them for you. Maybe you can guess them out. Uh, is Star Trek too much Star Trek at this point? There's a Star Trek for everybody. I think my mom. Uh, is on the USS Enterprise at the moment. That's how much Star Trek exists in the world. And a ton of other things. we got weekly watch lists that include things like, oh, all the Marvel movies cut in chronological order. Dan will tell you about that. It's a pretty impressive thing that that guy did. Um, F1, Moon Knight, Hell's Kitchen, Moonfall, Edge of Tomorrow, The Bubble. Tons of stuff for our weekly watch list. That's who's on the show. That's what's on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, I have one announcement for you. Uh, as you're listening to this, it is two days before we go live from The Handsome Daughter. So if you've been humming and hawing and trying to figure out, hey, what should I do this Saturday? We would love to see you there. Doors open at 7. Show goes on at 8. We're going to be doing a live debate. What series or movie should have its own restaurant, themed restaurant? doesn't matter where it is, but what, what, what should we do? How should we make this happen? That's what the debate is. Then we're going to do a bunch of trivia. And then we're going to do a QA and a if you, if you guys give a shit. If you have questions for us, we'd love to answer them. So uh, 7 o'clock, doors open. 8 o'clock, we go on stage. We're going to have a ton of fun. Uh, it's probably going to go off the rails like it does with most episodes on this show. So we hope to see you there. Come over, say hello to us. Uh, let us know what you think about the show after. Uh, maybe you'll win a, a prize. Uh, we've got a very special sponsor who gave us a, a bunch of free stuff. So uh, Saturday, Handsome Daughter, 8 p.m. Tickets at the door, cash only. Uh, we're not advanced. We don't have a system yet to take electronic payments. So cash only. Sorry, guys. Uh, what's all about not paying the government. Didn't say that. I have nothing else for you. So hopefully we see you at the live recording. If not, let us know what you think. We got a voicemail now and we have a way to review the show. Hit the link in our bio on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Hit leave a voicemail. It'll activate your smartphone. Start talking up to five minutes. Say some cool shit. We'll even put it on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you me, Dan, the best bond, the gold bond, and Emily. Here's our real talk. I will cue the real, and you enjoy the show. Let's tidy up this tangle of film by putting it on a reel. Here is a motion picture film. A thousand feet. 16,000 separate photographs. Welcome, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Real Debaters production. Welcome back to the show. Hi, how are you? It's been a while. I'm Michael Petro. I'm Dan Bond. And I'm Emily Clark. Hello, Emily Clark. Hey, Michael Petro, how who, are you? Who did you bring? Who is this Dan Bond gentleman of Oh, well, this is my, my beautiful and talented husband. I'm so glad you're here, sir. <laughs> I'm We've been talking about this for a couple <laughs> weeks now, and uh, I was like, okay, I know Emily travels now. So I kind of had to work work around that and stuff, yeah. and I was like, it'd be weird if the two of us just hung out without the- The, <laughs> the but, social lubricant? The social lubricant, yeah, exactly. I didn't want it to be weird for him, right? So. Do you know, so the thing with, with Dan being here is that every time he listens to our episodes, which he always does because he's a wonderful husband- And, uh, and a but, great fan. And a big fan, but he, it, it's constant feedback about like, I can't believe you said that, you're so wrong, or like, oh my God, I did what I said that instead, or how did you not say that? And I'm like, you know what, just sh put up or shut up, like come on the show, <laughs> and then- you can fight about it with me in real life. Let's see if you're like if you're all talk or what. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be the counselor for the next two <laughs> hours of this episode here, and maybe we can get these two closer together over the course of time. Or I'll be walking home. Or exactly, <laughs> I got that thing folds out out there, buddy. It's a double. You'll be more than comfortable, and one cat will sleep on you. So, well, anyways, Dan, thank you for coming, sir. I'm glad to be here. Um, I love the last name first of all, and being from the United Kingdom. Like, how do you, how is it growing up being a Bond? <laughs> 
That was pretty good. Well, I grew up in England being a Bond, so it was less. It was less. It was over. It was over with. But when I come over here, it was yeah. Oh, what's your name? Dan Bond. (laughs) Who is your brother, James? No. (laughs) (laughs) But (laughs) of course, I I think I'd be that guy. So I think you probably were the first time I saw (laughs) you. So uh, we are going to do a real talk for you this week, ladies and gentlemen. No, no tussling. We're just going to we're going to settle some scores. We've got our topics this week. We've got short ass movies because there was a sketch uh, a week ago as we're recording this uh, by Pete Davidson on SNL, which was hilarious, which made me want to talk about short movies in the time change of movies over the years and, and and what they were and what they are now and how fucking long some of them can be. Uh, we're also going to talk about monologues this week. We're actually going to act out our favorite monologues oh, for you in some wait. way, shape, or form. Can't wait. Uh, Christian Bale, don't listen. That's all I have to say. <laughs> uh, and then there's a bunch of other stuff. Dan brought a topic that we're going to talk about this week. We're going to get Trekkie on you. And I, 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 just to preface this, I my priest was a huge Trekkie fan growing up massive like he dressed in black when it went off the air wow (laughs) i don't know how to take that (laughs) i don't know if i religion normally doesn't do it for me but if i went to a church where it was like just the church of star trek i could probably get into that no it was catholic so it was awkward (laughs) you know wine tastings at a young age i don't want to get into it but guilt you can get lots of shame shame and guilt (laughs) shame with a side of guilt uh but he was just a nuts trekkie fan and i think that was my way of getting into star trek because i i I would have kept going star wars had i not and there's nothing wrong the, with that. I yeah. just loved them both all the time. Like you're the right way about that. It's it's neither there nor yeah. here. It's neither this nor that. Both of them exist in space. They're both fun and they're both cheesy as shit. So leave it alone, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go pew 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 in space. That's like really all I need. Yeah. <laughs> but before we get there, I just I want to say a couple new things here at the top of the show. Uh, we have a way to rate the show now, and we have a way to uh, leave voicemails. On the show, so we're entering uh, we're entering a more technological age here at the Real Debaters. Yes, we have a phone now. We have a phone Woo-hoo. now in the room. No, it's actually it's, <laughs> it's an invisible answering machine, but you can record from your smart device. It doesn't care that it's not a phone call. So uh, uh, go to the link in the bio at the end of the show. The links will be there. If you want to leave a voicemail for us, uh, be kind. That's all I'm asking. I mean, you can you can disagree with us, but don't be a dick because we just won't, we want to put it on the air. Right, we want we want to share it with the rest of the world, and then if you want to rate the show as well too, there's a link there to to do so, so that we can get feedback from you guys, and and do things that you want to hear us do, and uh, yeah, interact with with the the debater verse in, in such a way. So that's there. Uh, fuck it, I don't want to talk about this stuff anymore. So what did you watch this week, Emily? Oh well, uh, I, have... I got the list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry to report um, that I watched Moonfall this week. <laughs> There's a lot of sorry people out there. Oh my god! I so, liked it. <laughs> it was so. You know what? I gotta say that despite it being an absolutely insane story, absolutely horrible writing, really, really, truly god awful acting. Like I honestly did not know that Halle Berry could be. Oh, we're gonna go this, this deep. I gotta bring bad. this up it on IMDb. It was so <laughs> so bad but despite all of that it Roland Emmerich right sorry to cut you off <laughs> I don't know who the <laughs> director was like, but honestly it was it was such a bad movie but it made me feel like Armageddon and <laughs> Deep Impact and all of those like disaster you movies saying great movies no I know like all of those disaster <laughs> movies that you know you love so much and you like love to hate them and you watch them back and you're like there's nothing good about this except that the moon tries to like smush earth is the moon a character yeah pretty much (laughs) the moon tries really hard it does and so like at one point the moon is so close to like smashing earth that it's like scraping skyscraper (laughs) and they like use the moon's gravity to like beyond ridiculous rocket ship things into space honestly it is it's great the stupidest shit you've ever seen but it was so much right yeah so much fun okay uh I'm sorry. Let's let we need to park for a second. The moon <laughs> scraping skyscraper. Yeah, they actually use the gravity f- of the moon to launch a spaceship. Yeah, because but because, it only when the moon is like in the right but spot. But when the moon's going over the top. Yeah. I told you we could talk about Star Trek. I didn't mean the physics of any of this, Dan. <laughs> I have, there was no math on the exam. I was told that. I I think that the physics of this is highly questionable. I don't believe there was any <laughs> physics in this movie but they it, were it just was like, just hilarious it, it was it was it was really funny and there's a really great line where they're like arguing about what they're gonna do and 
And Halle Berry's character goes, I don't work for you. I work for the people of the United States of America. <laughs> and it's like, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know if I don't want to give it away necessarily for those people. Who you can haven't. spoil it. So, like, essentially what happens is basically there's a it's like an alien force that's living inside the moon. I heard about that. And so it's this it's this like angry alien force that's trying to kill off humanity. And I guess the moon is like a, a vessel to, uh, I don't know, it, I, I honestly don't even know. But in the end, this alien thing like shoots the moon off its trajectory, its regular orbit, and and that causes mass destruction of Earth. It's it's wild. It's truly wild. It's bonkers. So yeah. it, it is Roland Emmerich, who's 2012. Oh, those bonkers too. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I hate that movie. <laughs> It was, I mean, John Cusack can do no wrong, in my opinion, <laughs> even if he's guided by somebody who might he, be doing wrong. Driving, I can't remember if this is exact, but I remember him driving a limo yep. down a runway, yep. was falling apart, yep. and jumping onto a plane. Yep. Yeah, no, that couldn't happen. <laughs> but the moon scraping skyscrapers could. Is that, where, is that what you're going to argue? <laughs> you're going to bring against this? <laughs> okay, so he did He did 2012, The Day After Tomorrow. Oh, The Day After Tomorrow was I good. I like that one. Independence yeah. Day. That is in my top five movies of all time, Independence Day. Okay. I fucking love Independence Day. So, yeah, right? Like, I think he's just out of ideas for post-apocalyptic you know, crisis. I gotta say, now that I'm talking about it out loud, maybe I liked it better than I thought I did. Like, now that I'm saying it, like, the moon had aliens in it and it's trying to crush Earth, like, that actually sounds like a really good movie. I think if you go into it with the knowledge that you're watching a crap movie with amazing effects and just <laughs> go along for the ride, that you'll love it. But if you go in expecting anything, you're going to be disappointed. Okay, all right. So, bare, bare minimum expectations. Um, uh, cast. What, Patrick Wilson, right? Is, Hall that, yeah. is that what I saw? Pat Halle Berry. Um, I got it right here. Patrick Wilson, Halle Berry. Oh, John Bradley, Sam you know what? from Game of John Thrones. John Bradley was actually really good. And that was the only character that I really actually enjoyed their character arch. Arch? Character arc. He's the person, like, he's got kind of the, like, nerdy scientist role. Like, the guy who is, like, a, a conspiracy theorist that, like, at first discovers that the moon is off trajectory and everyone else, like, nobody believes him. I know what you're talking and about. And so, and then his character arc is really fun and he gets to be, like, this big, brave hero. And so I really enjoyed him. He was, re he was really good. Michael Pena, no? Um, Either of you? I love Michael was, Pena. I didn't really he's not recognize good. Blue Chips, um, Michael Pena he with was, Dax Shepard? So good. He, okay, so he was okay. He played the... Um, like the stepfather, the like the new husband. I'm out already. Of the like the wife of the astronaut that was like the disgraced astronaut. So he he had a nice character arch arc arch. What do I want to say arch? He had a nice character arc. It's too. arch now, baby. Like you got you got to like him. He was he came across as a dick, but he started to also. Oh, that's right. This movie was very clearly sponsored by Lexus. Right, he yes. he had a Lexus dealership. <laughs> Michael Pena's character had a Lexus dealership, and, was, yes, and he was... had like this big Lexus like logo behind him. And then later, he was like driving his Lexus really fast while the moon was trying to crush him. And it was yeah, out, it was out, it was beating like a like a, a, a jet or something. Or, yeah, it was something crazy. Yeah, like, it was what? handling. It was, like, it was like this is the best car ever. When yeah. did Optimus Prime show up? <laughs> exactly. So that that was really fun. I'm not kidding. <laughs> um, so that was that was interesting. But you know, okay. overall. Um, definitely worth watching. Maybe after a few hoots. Yeah, smoke, <laughs> smoke a joint, watch the movie. It's definitely enjoyable. Nice. If but like, but be prepared. Like you're you're watching a rebirth of those like disaster movies. Like it's it's definitely what it is. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I yeah. I, I'm gonna watch it. You should because should. I pay for it already. Yeah. <clears throat> I, but I'm gonna go into it with your. Lenses, oh. friends. Totally. The only, the only thing I wanted to say that I watched this week because it was really, really good and I can't recommend it highly enough was The Bubble on Netflix. Okay. I've heard mixed reviews. Oh, That's Judd Apatow, right? So funny. It was yeah. Hilarious. yeah. Okay. So funny. And 100%. It could have been that I thought it was super funny because I watched it right after I watched A Moonfall. few hoots. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, right <laughs> after <laughs> Moonfall? No, or did I watch it, it right before? We Maybe watched we watched it first. first. We watched it before Moonfall. I, Don't fight. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed out loud more often than not like <clears throat> throughout the whole movie it was very very funny it was very very silly um it was absolutely bonkers i i loved every second yeah of it. it was really well yeah we're, we're really well done what is the premise of it because so, the trailer is not really giving the premise, you much the they're, they're making a movie 
and everybody has to go into a bubble. Yeah, they so have the, to. So the cost it, they're and making crew it during quarantine a, in Fuck, a bubble. This is in this hotel. So hotel. art imitating life. Yeah, it is exactly. exactly it. And, and they're making a shitty of, movie. It's they're making like a Cliff Beast Six. It's part of the Cliff Beast franchise. So it's like I caught that. I caught yeah, that. Yeah. So it's like a it's like a Jurassic Park Six yeah. version, but the Cliff Beast version, and it's bonkers. Like, and so they're all Cliff Beasts. I get it. So they're all <laughs> stuck in this hotel, and it's just things going wrong, and uh, then they get put back in quarantine for another two weeks and then there's just all these other antics that are going on it, it it's about what the last few years has been like and that's amazing and so like and the studio basically doing anything they can to make this movie because like they have to because there's only two movies in production in the whole world yeah. and it's like them and one other so one it's make it's a farce of the entertainment it's, industry yeah, during COVID. It, yeah so it's it's a mockumentary it's a mockumentary which is already my favorite style of movie so, oh, oh, uh, uh, turn it up to 11. Exactly. Sorry, yeah. I know that's bad. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I promised myself I wasn't <laughs> going to do an accent in front of you, fucking idiot. <laughs> I grew up I grew up on the mockumentary filmmaking, or film style. Like it, The best line in that is, hello, Cleveland, when he's not in Cleveland <laughs> hello, at all. Cleveland. <laughs> hello, Cleveland. Hello, yeah. Cleveland. Uh, it's not Cleveland. <laughs> Go on. Um, but, so yeah, so I, I was already bound, in, bound to love it because it was a mockumentary, and they just did such a great job. It was very, very funny. So, um, two very different styles of movies. Uh, both very, one's good <laughs> one's good um, again though not like life changing filmmaking or anything but definitely very enjoyable good cast uh, yeah. Peter Sarah Finowitz uh, Amy Pond yeah Amy Pond yeah Caring Jillian uh, I know him David from John, Duchovny John Wick is the guy who gives him his weapons yep. yeah right um, yeah David Duchovny still hilarious as ever David Duchovny like, like Mulder yep. yeah yeah yeah, there's a line at some point where they're all. Like, I thought that was him, but I was like, the life's not been kind since no. California vacation. There's still, a, there's still, a, there's, still there's, funny though. There's a oh, line yeah. like in the movie where they're all coked out and they're just like out of their minds, and he's like, oh, "I used to be so handsome. You wouldn't even believe it. Like, punch me in the fucking face, handsome." <laughs> <laughs> it, it was amazing. It's. I mean, it is okay. Hang on, Fred Armisen, David Duchovny, Keegan Michael Key, A. A. Ron, uh, yeah. Yeah. Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal uh, was Leslie very Mann, funny Jim, in it. Jim Leslie Abadou's, Mann is also that's, great. That's She's wife. David Duchovny's ex-wife in the movie. The oh. whole it's a great it's a great movie. Maria Bakalova, who is Borat two. I haven't seen that one. You haven't seen that? Oh man, she's she's Borat's daughter in it. Or oh, Borat's... she plays the um she plays the uh the TikTok star who gets pulled into the oh, okay. sixth episode just because like to bring young <laughs> Talent she has to a the million screen. followers. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Like we're loving it, and it's like four point seven out of ten on IMDb. Ah. Well, IMDb I don't trust doesn't IMDb. know what they're talking. They about. do it was not. Hilarious. They do not. No, I trust you guys. Very very funny. Um, like dick and fart joke. Smart oh, ri- writing. Yeah. No, we... more smart. Oh, yeah. I would say the but opposite. They, I would say I'd more say dick both, and fart. Actually. <laughs> It's, a good combination of both. I think you know what? So, yeah. I think it's... overall the the theme is smart, like uh, kind of, but the the content is quick and dirty. Yeah, a lot of. Some yeah. slapstick in there yeah. too, just to get the belly laughs going. It's, uh, it's I've been, very funny. I've been watching a lot of serious stuff. I need I, I need to tell myself watch comedies, otherwise you're just going to turn into Jeffrey Dahmer. Like I, <laughs> I don't. Then this this one is for you. It is, there's nothing complicated, dark, difficult about it at all. It's just pure laughs, like the whole time. And you know what? It looks like a true Judd Apatow movie because as he's gotten on. His movies, which we're going to talk about in a bit, have gotten longer. And Funny People yes. is like almost five hours. Do I'm you know, over-exaggerating. <laughs> it's like two hours and 40 minutes. And I'm like, a comedy? How is a comedy this long? I yeah. actually had the same thought while I was watching this that I kept thinking it was going to end. And I was sad about it. I was like, oh, I wish this movie was longer. But then it kept going. And I kept going? being happy that it was going. Like, at no point did I think, oh, I wish this movie had ended already. I, ca- I found myself continually thinking, oh, I hope this doesn't end soon because it's a comedy and I thought it would. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw the timestamp on it because uh, I judge a book by its cover and I was like, what, two and a half hours? And then I thought funny people's like that. Uh, Knocked up is like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, like there's this third act to a comedy that I'm like, holy Shakespeare. Yeah. This is not expected at all. Oh, it was so fun. OK. Uh, anything else? Uh, those are my two big ones. Those those, I mean, I don't want to take all of them because. Spoiler alert, what we watched this week is actually pretty much the same. So I got to leave something for Dan. <laughs> okay. You, well, really? In the same household, you guys managed to sit in front of the same TV. That's How weird, right? odd. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, we lost. actually still like each other, too. So we, we spend most of our time together. You know what? I, <laughs> Sean is my first big boy relationship, <laughs> like adult relationship where you buy things together and you commit to each other, like all those things. And, uh, 
I was like, yeah, great time to pick a serious relationship in a pandemic for your first time. <laughs> like yeah. my first serious, and it wasn't a problem at all, actually. Like I love, we, we love being around each other. Like we spend lots of time together, but I just thinking over the last two years, how many relationships were like teetering? Trial by fire. And then, or started, oh, right? Started, yeah. Right? And like, supercharged. Well, we have friends who started in a relationship and it's worked out great. Yep. And, and I think that's just because it was the two people who found each other who were sick of dating yeah. and they also have a like they're also great together so like that that worked out fine but i can imagine a lot of people would have been like yeah let's just do anything right now i'm lonely <laughs> we right. got married just before the pandemic and i really i think it could have gone either way for us like there was gonna break hard one way or the other like we were either gonna get like way better or everything was gonna fall apart and this it... is news to me I thought <laughs> this <is> great. <laughs> um we're just very I'm gonna different, start billing very different you people you know <laughs> so we obviously got way better so no that yeah that's all that's i just yeah I, anyway sorry uh <laughs> the, the real life moment over um i will go next and we will let our esteemed guests go last yeah that sounds good give them time uh, to think about it yeah I exactly wrote my, i wrote mine down <laughs> <laughs> i brought a note <laughs> i'm gonna say that uh by the way it gets, oh yeah sorry, it gets yeah. um four lunar eclipses out of ten like so dark you wish you didn't see the fucking movie <laughs> <laughs> no like you know a lunar eclipse is cool and but you'll see more than the, <laughs> more than you think of them in your lifetime you know, like they're not they're as, overrated they after are you've overrated seen one because you've seen you've seen one or two. They were really cool. <laughs> and then you're like, all right, well, now I've seen them all. Um, I've seen Independence Day. I don't I've need seen, to see. You don't Moonfall. need anything <laughs> other than Independence Day in my mind. Don't so. ruin your Roland Emmerich and watch Moonfall is what you're saying. You know what? Watch it. But be prepared to. Uh, are there any animal crackers on someone's stomach? No. No. <laughs> are there any, you know, regal presidents like Morgan Freeman? Because she mentioned Deep Impact and, and Armageddon, so there, I'm there was who, there know, was a president. I don't remember who the president. Honestly, was, I don't remember there either. There was a president in there. It wasn't. wasn't it was memorable. Honestly, it, it was so memorable. it was so cookie cutter. Like it, they just took the plot, stuck it into another movie. They took three plots and stuck <laughs> it into one movie. <laughs> oh had the moon had the moon try to crush people, and that was it. Like really, it's like three dicks in one ass. That's, <laughs> that's the visual I got. Him. Was, I don't know why that's the one I got. But you know what? <laughs> Uncomfortable but fun. So there you go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that that comes right back around. And then uh, for the bubble, how how many uh, how many uh, social distances out of ten? You know what? I don't care what IMDb says. That was one of the funniest movies I've seen in a really long time. I am giving it nine social distances out of ten. That's fifty four feet. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Forget you, IMDb. You know what? I, I IMDb, right? Yep. IMDb. Yep. Um, the algorithm just ain't as 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 weak. Weak sauce. Obviously, people just don't know what they're talking about. I, ne I, I never use it as a rotten <laughs> tomatoes. I just kind of watch it. And just see. watch it. Yeah, yeah. Just, For everyone listening, I'm smart. They're dumb. IMDb doesn't know what's happening. Just listen to me. You heard it here first. Yeah. Uh, what did I watch? Are you guys on Moon Knight? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. We're caught up. Yeah. Uh, so Moon Knight is the absolute shit. I love it. Um and. Do you did you read the comic books at all beforehand? I'm aware of them. I've seen like a couple, but not like uh, enough. I knew his backstory a bit. Okay, I knew nothing. No. Yeah, I don't nothing know anything. Nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not going to not know anything because Marvel sets a high bar for all of us, right? They're like, you need to do your fucking homework. Yeah. If you don't know this, it, you need you you can't watch it, not enjoy it, or enjoy it, not if you haven't yeah, read yeah. about it. So I went down like a Wikipedia rabbit hole of all things Mark Spector. <laughs> yeah. And uh, found out that if you really think about it, oldest Marvel superhero, technically, right? Conchu dates before yeah. pretty much everybody. Uh, but the multiple personality thing was the big hook for me. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then watching it, I was like, oh, I was, I'm glad I did an hour of research on this because yeah. as soon as he was having these moments where he didn't know where he was. Such a good actor. Oh Jason Isaac's God. amazing. Oscar. Um, Jason Isaacs is also a good actor too. <laughs> <laughs> Just different actor. Um, but uh, I, when the when the first episode because like it just aired last night, it's too soon to even spoil it too much. But spoiler alert. Uh, but the first episode where they do so many things that are anti to everything we've yeah. seen, they introduce the costume in the first episode. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just for a split second, but you got to see it at the end. And then when they put Oscar Isaac on the mirror and you got to see how they're going to interact with each other. The talk back and forth. The talk yeah. back and forth. I got, I'm getting shivers up my spine again. I was like, this is going to go off the rail because you're, you get to see the show through Steven's perspective. 
and yeah. Mark pops up. But you're always Steven, right? You're always bumbling through yeah. life. You're always trying to get and well working in the gift shop. Right, work, yeah, you're a gift shoppy. <laughs> I right? absolutely loved when Steven called the suit and it was like a tuxedo. And it was just like his own little outfit. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like rolled up sleeves, I like it's Miami it. Vice. Oh my God, so cute. And <laughs> j- just the, like, it's the, I mean, second episode, you guys saw it yep. for the night? Okay, so I'm not going to spoil anything for you. Uh, listener, I don't care. So <laughs> uh, we've told you. But uh, Ethan Hawke is just. I don't. I don't know how to explain how happy I am to see these two playing off of each other. He's doing an amazing job. Yeah. It th- from from putting glass in his sh- sandals. Yeah. And and it, to to being like basically explaining the whole plot in the second episode, which was really great because it's like, hey, I'm Amit's avatar. I used to be Conchu's avatar, and he's an asshole when he gets inside of you. He's there without your permission. So I'm going to tell you what for. And now you have this like. Does Steven make the right choice with Mark or does he make the wrong choice with Amit's avatar? Like it it's so fucking thrilling to watch a superhero story be told through bad mental health and 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 multiple personality disorder. Like yeah. it's a different route altogether. Especially cuz I actually don't even really know what's up. Like I did not do any research. I'm watching it as is and it is cool because I don't really know yet if there's a good guy, bad guy clearly defined one way or another. I'm just like this is wild, but I like and I love the way that it um, it really captures the I don't know the anxiety and like the disconnect of all of it. Like I feel uncomfortable when I'm watching it in a good way. Like I'm panicked for Stephen. Yeah, and I and I feel I feel the panic that he feels, but I feel the p- panic that Mark feels too when he's stuck in the that mirror, and it's all I don't know. It all feels like. It's, un- it's uncomfortable. It's an hour of me just kind of like sitting on my hand, chewing my lip. Like, it's visceral. Yeah, it's visceral. Exactly. It's like when uh, Stephen was captured in the mirror at the end, he's like, I don't like this. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's how you felt. Yeah. That's how I, yeah. oh, this is not, this is too small. Yeah. And sorry. And um, <laughs> like, when, and then when they flash to him in Cairo and he's like in a towel and he's been there, for, you don't know how long he's been there yeah. for and he's yeah. just panicking and, and Mark is drunk as shit sitting there like flipping open the curtains to the, to the pyramids. I was like, where is this go? This has Wanda vision yes. all over it, right? Yeah. Like unknown territory, trying something new, specifically with a character that like 90% of people who watch these movies don't know. So many risks being yeah, taken. Yeah, it's so cool. Like, I'm loving it. What do you think of the costume, Dan? I like it. It yeah. looks a little CGI to me, a it little do- bit. Yeah, I agree. But I'm, whatever, it's fine. It, it, it's, a, it's a costume that morphs as opposed to a costume that's worn. Yes. Well, it does, the costume does do that, right? Like I think. I think it can change as he's where it does, like it has its Is this own. cape? Do we have another cape? I don't think it's, I think it's just the costume is an extension of hi, him, right? So yeah. like when Steven did it, which is why it was a tuxedo, so that it can change. <laughs> so I think it has to be CGI so that it can change in later episodes. Ah. Uh, I think. So. But I'm just guessing here. I, <laughs> multiple personalities means three to me. I'm pretty sure it's more. Really? But again, I'm only basing this off of something I read 20 years ago. Well, hey, I'm 20, 20 years ago is when they really started to fucking churn this shit out, yeah, right? So like, I, I, I think it's more. I'm having a hard time keeping up with two, so I guess we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I would love something like this is when, um, what's, his, what's his balls? Um, Professor X, young version. Sam, uh, no, um, uh, McAvoy. McAvoy, yeah. yeah. Uh, when, he does, when he did Split, right? So I've never seen Split. Oh man, it's just a clinic in acting. Like it's a, not a great movie, but I mean, it's M Night Shyamalan. I've, I've heard it's good. It, it it's good to watch him, mm. right? Like the story is it's a kidnapping. You've seen the story before, right? And you know it's just the big what huge ending that M Night gives you. So yeah, those two things are different, but everything else is is very procedural. Anyways, the um uh the, the train of thought that I had that I lost. Sorry. Um, it, it's fine. It, <laughs> it goes away sometimes. The split, the acting. Multiple, Sorry, the split. Multiple, yeah, yeah, I hope that Oscar Isaac gets to do that with this character. Act with multiple characters. Multiple characters. Like, there's maybe an angry, darker version than Mark, right? Yeah. And there's, like, a loony bin version of, like, the Jokers inside of him or something, right? Where, like, each episode, because it's only six episodes. You can't do much. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, I think this could have been a movie. I think they could have made this into a movie, but depending on how the next few episodes go. Like, so far, I'm like this would be a real good three-hour movie. Cause, but that's just because I want to see what happens next. <laughs> yeah, and he's only signed on to do this, too. Yeah. Like, his contract isn't a standard Marvel contract where it's like, we've got you for 12 years. Yeah. 
It's uh, maybe but we might have to renegotiate. They'll probably throw some money at him, and he'll be in an Avengers in the background or something. I'd love to see him and Doctor Strange together, and like their like cape starts to talk to the Conchu outfit. Like they they're, they're like <laughs> flirt, they flirt, uh, right? I was thinking him and uh, Deadpool would be fun. That yeah, watch them fight. Yeah. Oh my, because they are the most for, violent. Yeah. yeah, they're the most violent of everybody. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't believe Disney's actually letting this happen. <laughs> like, well, now that it's the multiverse too, we can like do anything. Marvel can, can do absolutely anything they we want. We can jump from Fox to Disney to Sony. Sony, and yeah. Get out of Sony. That's is... what Sony wants. We want to jump. Sony wants us to jump to Sony. Do you know what Sony wants more than anything? To pretend they never made Morbius. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that thing is getting <laughs> shit on, but that's a different conversation. I give Moon Knight. Um, how many moon falls? How many moon? <laughs> how many true moons? Blue moons, half moons. Um, Morph uh, suit, morphing uh, suit. What's what's the pill that you give somebody for schizophrenia? Because <laughs> that's what I want to give it. <laughs> I don't Sorry to anybody out there who's got schizophrenia. Uh, 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 nine out of ten um, uh, lorazepam's. <laughs> nice. That's not for schizophrenia, but I have nine or ten lorazepam's if you need one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom of Sean's purse too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, fuck, 20 out of 30 beatdowns. Like, there's so many good <laughs> things about this. I will give it 9 out of 10 sandals full of glass. Yeah, mm. nice one. That is what I'll give it. And it can't really fail me because I don't know anything. And it's a dark, weird plot. And it's not full of, you know, superhero punch and, and goodness and yeah. doing right. It's full of panic and anxiety. Panic and, and anxiety. And, <laughs> that's maybe why I like it so much. Right? Right in. I This feels like home. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's my, uh, that's my full review of something that I remembered. Uh, <laughs> that said, Dan, what's on your list? Actually kind of leads into mine because mine's The Tourist. Um, about a dude that just wakes up in the middle of Australia. Jamie Dorn, right? I don't know any of the actors okay. or actresses in it. Sorry, you don't have. I'm, I'm uh, the one here that does all that shit. Um, but yeah, so he wakes up in the middle of Australia with absolutely no memory, um, and basically he tries to find his memory back, and it just progresses through. I think it's six episodes, and it's real. The first four are really good, and then it kind of lost me a little bit. So, yeah, like it, 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 it's showing up on my um, advertisements on Prime. All it's Prime, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Chris Chris Sweeney is the director. Harry Williams is the is the writer. It is Jamie Dorn. So Fifty Shades of No, I never saw that. Fifty Shades of Handcuffs. Fifty yeah. Shades of Anal Lube. Whatever the hell that show was about. <laughs> um, doesn't have a oh, oh Olaf or Dari Olafson. That guy. Yes. The Icelander who's <laughs> in every guy. movie. Uh, yeah, he's... Oh, he's one of my favorites. He's um, he's an assassin in this one. Really? Yeah. That's the last role I would ever think to cast him <laughs> in. He's always the big guy. He's a helicopter pilot in Walter Mitty. So I got to say that he, Dan actually picked the one thing that I, I haven't been watching with him. Oh. I have not um, been watching The Tourist, so I don't know anything about it. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. I, I, it's, it's only six episodes, so it's worth, if you've got some time to kill, to give it a shot. Like, I really enjoyed the beginning the final episode i just got a little confused in it like <laughs> i tried to pull too many different storylines together i feel which and i feel with a guy who's got memory loss yeah you could grasp at a lot of straws yeah like the way they he was piecing it all back together and it was it turns out he was a very bad dude like okay. uh and as he starts to recover his memory it's like to some of the people that are helping him are like, are you sure you want to keep going down this road? Because this is looking like you could probably just leave right now. And then you don't know, right? Like you're yeah, fine. Yeah. He's like, no, I want to remember. I want to remember. And so he goes through the process and eventually he <coughs> gets his memory back, but no spoilers. He's not a good dude. <coughs> so he's coming to terms with two problems, his memory loss and yeah. who he is as a person <laughs> when it comes m- back. moral failings. Yes. And so <laughs> it ends up he's being chased. He, uh, he stole something from somebody powerful and they're chasing him and he doesn't know they're chasing him until he does. And then he doesn't know why they're chasing him. <laughs> and A lot of whodunits. A lot of whodunits. And it was it was really enjoyable. Okay. Mostly. How many how many uh, cases out of uh, of amnesia out of ten do you give it? I would <clears throat> six and a half cases of amnesia should be about enough. What to... were we talking about? <laughs> uh, Moonfall. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Um, what what else did you? What did you guys watch together this week? Moonfall was the hers. What what was what was yours that you know? 
we've been watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe in chronological the super cut. The super yes, we. You, you sent this to me, and I meant to watch it, and uh, it takes four days. Of pure... Do you want to know, Mike, what the crazy thing about this is? Though this is our third time through this Marvel Cinematic Universe super cut. Like it is forty nine hours of movies. No, four days. And oh, it's like sorry, four it's complete four days. days. And and complete we have now dedicated our life to watching it twice through and now we're on our third time so like it is so much fun and it gets the guy who makes it it gets different every time so like he, he adds he adds in the stuff so now we've got one division is in it we have uh cap and winter cap, soldier cap, yeah winter soldier loki, loki and um, um a whole bunch of them are black widow like, yeah the that's right we, uh, it's black all, widows it's in all it for the, the way first up time. to shang chi and so like and it's, rings, it's all yeah. cut chronologically so it's, as it happens, who is the guy who made this? Uh, I think it's called Dirty Thirty. Uh, I'd have to look it up. The the actual guy that does it. And this but, is the one you sent me on Twitch, right? Uh, no. I've got it on my Plex. Oh, your your Plex? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you sent me that one. Yeah, really send cool. me that again because I do. I I just I think it expired. I he does a bunch it, of supercuts too. Doesn't yeah, there's he? some X Men ones yeah. on there too. This uh, one is just it's so good. The way yeah. he does it is amazing, and you can. He's got a. I don't know if it's a Patreon or if it's just like a. You can send him some money. So yeah. we sent him. I mean, we've we've watched. Yeah, like watch a week and a half straight of his content now. So we've yeah. definitely sent him some cash for it. But it's amazing. It's really really good. I uh, I need to get my hands on <clears throat> on that again. Someone else send them cash too, because that's a lot of work. Oh, it's a and passion he, project, and he right? does a like, great job of it. Like, like yeah, it's perfect. It's professional. You can't tell that. You can't tell the other. One minute you're watching a scene with Iron Man, and then it cuts to Thor, and then it cuts to the Hulk, because they all those three movies happen at the same time, and then like. It's the beginning of Captain Marvel, and then it goes into. We went. We just else. we watched. It was like we watched Captain America, and then it was Captain Marvel, and now we're into the beginning of Black Widow. But it like, but even within those, it kind of and even, yeah, even back within there, they'll have a cut scene uh, from a later like Black Panther has a scene that like a flashback scene that right. happened in eighty four. So that happens in the middle of Black Widow. Like you're watching Black Widow, and then this cut scene will happen from a different it's, movie. It's really cool. It's amazing. <laughs> I've never, <clears throat> I mean, I've seen a super cut just to like cheat on the show and stuff when someone picks something that I've never seen. I'm like, oh, I don't got two hours for this. Uh, but a true super cut from an editor's, like, it, is he, do you think he's a, a, oh, he's a got real to editor? He has he's to be. Be, yeah. Like, to know, to not only know the lore and the stories where they cut to, right? Like, yeah. if you if you layered them, if you, we made a Marvel chart, yeah, right, then you could <clears throat> you could essentially see it. But this guy's only got these movies, so he's like, okay, he's well, watching them. Sure, he's got a list of the, yeah. the script and stuff, and he's just like cutting it. Or you know, don't it. ruin my dreams of how he <laughs> makes this. The beginning of it is my favorite part because the beginning of it is like every origin scene from every movie. So there's just like an hour where it's like not even a movie or or anything. It's just it's just the origin scene, like origin scene after origin scene after origin scene for sixty this is minutes disgusting. straight. Disgusting! I could kill oh, a weekend doing it. It's this. so good. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, four days, a long weekend. Like, if I, you never slept or yeah, peed well, or anything. Uh, hey, I've done, I've done Star Wars. <laughs> I have, I did all six multiple times. Yeah. Well, um, this is this is so worth it. It usually takes us a couple months. Yeah, well, well, so, well it, it's broken up into like two and a half hour blocks. Chunk, chunk oh, yeah. oh, really? So, oh, uh, so that even this if is you giving do, me a hard on how good this is, <laughs> so, like, yeah, so you'll be watching it, and then eventually you'll be in the middle. Like it'll be in the middle of a something, but it's usually a, a, a natural stopping point, and yeah. it'll just stop. And you're like, oh, okay, let's get let's go beer, to bed. Yeah, beer, we'll <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then or be like, oh, we could probably do one more. Yeah. Okay, so how many? How many cut twos out of ten do you get? Oh, fifteen. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's perfection. I've watched it too many times for it to know, and I was excited to watch it again. Like, does he fade? Because the, there's so much, there's so much anthem, there's so much music, right? That would not complement each other unless, like, he does it. I don't know how he does it. Oh! But it's a great job. You don't even notice you know, you that you're notice. watching like, different he, movies. He, he either picks the correct one, he he picks the one that works best with the scene, or fades it through. Yeah. Or, but and there's times when you don't even really, you don't. Like you almost don't realize you've changed movies. It takes a couple minutes for you to be like, "Oh shit, we're watching Black Widow now." Oh, also, yeah. he's also put all of the deleted scenes and yes. um, extra extra stuff in there. Yeah, he and does. So there's a couple scenes where they 
didn't do all of the effects. Which is so cool. And like you can so, see the, you can the, see the stunt, green. You can see the stunt like doubles the running and they yeah. haven't like done their like Oh, so they haven't taken out the person over. and like, they put the other ones in and there's a couple of them like just pure basic wireframe CGI of a, uh, like uh, Captain America when the huge tank they showed a wireframe of that of what it was going to be. It's, um, it's and cool. it, it can take you out of it a little bit when you're watching it, but then you just like. Sometimes pretty, you get like the cool. headers and the footers that are like showing the frame rates yeah. and stuff. Sure, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that kind of stuff, you're still pulling from source material, yeah. so whatever. It's right? cool. It's it's honestly so cool. Yeah. Oh my god. I don't know who that guy is, but if he's listening to this, we love you. Thank yeah, you. I want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, come on the I show. I want to know what I want to see your chart. Yeah. I want to see so your vision board. Like, what does your room look like? How many sticky notes cover your wall <laughs> with, like, no, Captain America didn't do... Where's that one? What was Wolverine doing there? Was he doing it there and Hulk was here, right? Like, I yeah. that, that'll mm. kill a man, person. Um, wow, okay. That's a really good... That's some Marvel Moon Knight. That's some... <laughs> that's a moon that can scrape the top, the of, top a of a skyscraper, skyscraper, Mommy. Exactly. <laughs> mommy, why is that building crushing onto the moon and we're not because the skyscrapers... <laughs> all, like, I'm sorry. I know that there's there's a website. I've looked at it. And it's what you... It, you can consult um, people in mathematics and physics and, and trigonometry and biology when you're writing a film. And oh, they did you, not know about this website. Yeah. No, they did not. Well, I mean, it's just sad because Emmerich is a disaster movie guy. That's what he does. That's He he knows his lane. He hasn't really stepped out of it. And um, like he's not going to do dances with wolves type shit. You know, but at the same time, he's going to give you two hours of, of, it's like a roller coaster ride. Well, you know what? Fuck it. What do I know? Maybe he did. No, you know, them. you know and a lot. You're probably right. Maybe. No, maybe I just he did. mean, you know what? No, but the, the consensus is like, this is, <laughs> this is a word on the street. Right. The thing is, though, if he did, it wouldn't have worked, and it wouldn't have looked very cool. <laughs> also, even if he so, went, even he hired twenty yeah, of them. Also, yeah. it's the rule of fantasy sci-fi, right? If it happens two times and no one questions it, then it's just fact in that world. It does exist, and, yes. and so yeah. I, I'm on board. I'm here for it. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's your there's your list for the week. There's your there's what you should watch. Even if it's shitty, you should still watch it. Because uh, fuck life, time, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Moonfall, uh, the bubble. Uh, Moon Knight gets a three star approval here in the room and the Marvel Supercut, which if you can find it, Dirty 30, uh, uh, throw him some cash if you're going to watch it because he did a really good thing for, for all of us. I'll, Marvel. I'll, I'll look for it and send you the link. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To, to his cool. Site. And then if does you think he's on social media, like does Probably. he have is his name attached to this? Uh, I looked, I followed him on Twitter for a little while, but he he was just posting a lot of political US stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm here for the Marvel. You can unfollow. <laughs> but that means we can maybe find him and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then just be like, make another show. Twitter account and I'll follow that one. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't whatever. So. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Uh, we are entering the second phase of the show which is where all the fun uh, conversations will come. So uh, first up on the list to open up the docket yeah, is, uh, as mentioned previously, uh, Short Ass Movies was a sketch on SNL recently. And uh, did you guys check it out? I did not watch it. You didn't watch it? Did you watch it? I didn't. You fucking guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. Okay, well, for all of you out there who have watched it and the two people under a rock who haven't, that's fine. You have kids. I, don't <laughs> I heard it was it. funny. It's super funny. But the joke in it was specifically that... Movies are too fucking long, right? And, well, wrong, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but either way, he was poking fun at, like, what you would do in an hour and a half movie and, like, how it, like how you would base your evening around it. Like, it's all the the punny shit that you would expect from from a musical sketch on, on SNL. So I started thinking. I was like, yeah, you know what? Sometimes, like, like Shauna says to me, she's like, I don't have two and a half hours. And in my head, I'm just used to two and a half hours. Yeah. That I'm like, like. You have to dedicate your evening to that like that's a do. that's a whole thing right yeah absolutely it, it it is and when you start like living life again like for the last two years it's been pretty easy but like and i was like that's probably why covid wasn't as bad for me <laughs> so I was like, another movie <laughs> fuck this real life shit not contagion another movie right <laughs> narnia let's go to narnia but uh yeah now i'm, and I'm like yeah we sit down and watch a movie and then I always pick these big long epic fucking journeys that I want to get lost in because I don't like the real life but sometimes you don't have the time and sometimes you don't want to sometimes your ass falls asleep sometimes 
there's a hundred reasons why. So like, I don't know you guys is, first of all, we'll, we'll start right off the hop as parents. Like, do you, does that factor in a lot of the time when you're watching for yourself or with kids? You know, I don't know. I think growing up, right. Every Disney movie that you were ever exposed to was 90 minutes. Give or take a few minutes here and there. So you've got. Yeah. So give me some rescue rangers. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> exactly. No, the ranger, the, the rescuers. The that's rescuers. <laughs> the rescuers down under. Uh, <laughs> but that's right. Like, that's just my whole childhood. And so, I don't know. When I think about my favorite movies, um, I mean, Lion King is right at the top of there. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. You know, some of those. And then those are the ones that now I get to rewatch with my kids or with our kids. And it's. It's, they're not only as good as they ever were, but our kids love them too. So I, I think that there's a, a beautiful time and place for, for short movies and the new ones that are being made too. Like, <coughs> what was the one that we just saw? Oh, Turning Red. Oh, that movie was so good. Is it an hour and a half? Yeah, about 90 minutes. 40? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I don't, no, wasn't it a bit longer? I don't think I don't, so. Don't, no. Don't but like, it was so, so good. Like, they're just, it's perfect. I totally think that an hour and a half is the perfect amount of time. I don't have to pee in an hour and a half. You know, I can go pee before, I can go pee after. My popcorn lasts. I disagree a hundred percent on that it's a good length for a movie, but there are good short movies. <coughs> a movie should be about two and a half hours long. Really? Yeah. So long. <laughs> but okay. If you look at the evolution of, right? I do actually I was like, okay, so let's let's just like preface with some actual history here and shit. Nineteen fifty to nineteen sixty five average runtime for top films. Uh, uh, gaining about twenty minutes on average. Like yeah. interesting after In the golden time. age of yeah. cinema, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is when twenty minutes. So, so like all of the silent stuff, like seven minutes, right? Like everything was a short film. Yeah. yeah, everything was was a fucking short film, not by you know artistic definition, but but like literally very also short capabilities and stuff too. Well, that's like, it. Yeah. Um, that trend changed nineteen sixty five to nineteen eighty five. During this period, movies lost about. 10 minutes in runtime this is due to the rise in home video um although lawrence of arabia the ten commandments and uh were released around this period and those movies were like two hours and 20 minutes like you're saying right yeah. and those were the ones you had to get in double box sets right like yeah i had titanic and i had it on two different vhs tapes or same with um pearl harbor I had Pearl Harbor on two different. That's tapes. Though, that's why they kept them shorter, right? So they could keep them on one tape. And... Exactly. Like it, it's it's all over the map. Here is my point. There's yeah. no there's no rhyme or reason. It's just changing. But um, the the real definition of why well I shouldn't say definition a quote Rolling Stone film critic Peter Travers 2013 says that the movies got longer because they got beefier because that's what the Oscars vote. Yeah. Right, like look at look at traditionally what wins a, the best picture. Yeah, it's not some buck forty. It's yeah. not some in and out big long quick epic movie. Right, yeah. it's not a it's not a, a stroke and a poke and you're done. It's it's we want you in the seat. We want you affected. We want to get in your fucking head, yeah. which is where the two and a half hour. Mark I guess so. It also gives from. you time to get really creative with your effects. You can have those big long epic fight scenes, like in Lord of the Rings, right? Like Battle of Helm's Deep yeah. and things like that. Really, you have the opportunity. I to... was just thinking, Lord of the Rings is like the first movies I remember being long. Like, Which really? is funny okay. because yeah. you hate Lord of the Rings movies. I Every hate Lord I know. Of the Rings movies, Every so. time I suggest watching them, Dan's like, I have better things to do than watch people walk for four yeah, hours. Like, okay. The like, Kevin <laughs> Smith joke is on point. Yes. Yeah. Like, they could have cut half an hour out of each of those movies. I love them. I want to watch the extended edition. I want. <laughs> uh, look at go call Rob. He bought the big she DVD. Was, Rob and I have the same the brain. Yeah, like, he'll, yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Everything okay. Rob says, I'm like, yes, that was on my notes. Also, uh, back to what you're saying. Why Dan? Two hours and thirty minutes. Like, what? What is it for, to, for you? I what mean, is it like, that you just, want in two hours? A, and... so you can flesh it out more, right? You got your opening act, introduction, figure out these characters, what they're doing. Building it up through Act Two, and then a nice big old Act Three. Like I, I just want to like I, I if I'm gonna give these characters my time, I want to get to know them a little bit. I want to by the end of it, I want to care that whatever's happening is to them. But as a general rule, the shorter movies don't don't quite get there. I find whereas some of those big old long ones just give you a chance to get into uh, 
Just in the zone. So then Have some reefers and just <laughs> zone out. And That's, we got to the crux of it, really. Yeah. It's all yeah, about no, the perfect amount of time to smoke some weed. As soon as that weed hits, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is, this yeah. is, I love exactly where I am right now with all of this. Uh, but I, is, okay, so then to your point, how long was, was uh, Lord of the Rings? What is that, two hours and 45 minutes? I think some of them were closer to three. And then the I extended editions are closer to four. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It can be. Um, I totally agree with you on that. Um, that said, though, I think it comes to a matter of length and what to do with that length because we gave Peter Jackson three hours. Yeah, well, and we, it's too it, much. People love it though. Disagree. That's the thing. I love it. Yeah, people love the people that love Lord of the Rings love it. And yep. good, let them have it. But like, <laughs> I'm watching a four day long movie edit. Uh, like, I love long movies. <laughs> You're the wrong kind of have this cut. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched a four day long cut of the Marvel. Yeah. Uh, I want my movies two hours and forty seven minutes all the time. Yeah, you want me to watch short ones? Oh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but like Give short, me two short ones. Short movies are great. Like, if, like uh, I've got for for I've got a short list here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, What's your short uh, list? A like short list of z- short movies. Zombieland. Oh, like that was it, on my uh, list. It gets to the point. It sh- like it's zombies everywhere, and uh, there you go. Uh, I've got <laughs> <laughs> Reservoir Dogs. It has. Hang on. Let's let's oh. pause on Zombieland for a second here. We've sure. got we've got some time because we actually started early on this segment, so we're good. We can chew the yarn. Oh, fair chew enough. Chew the yarn. Yeah, chew the taffy. Yeah, pull enough. the yarn. I'll fuck those up all day long. <laughs> um, what's your favorite zombie kill? If you're gonna mention this movie, we can we can we can unpack a couple sure, things here sure. out of all of those things because they do the zombie kill of the week, right? Or zombie kill of the yeah, day? Yeah, I think. My favorite, because I didn't expect it, was when they killed Bill Murray. Yeah, I was going to say that too. <laughs> it is, it's like the highest and lowest point of that Yeah, film. it's like, you kill Bill Murray. But we got Bill Murray as Bill Murray. That was, that yeah. was, yeah. The, and it was in such a brilliant way. Okay, so they're going to Hollywood, right? They get to Hollywood, yeah. right? Where do they go? The tippy top as I think he says, I of the fuck, it's, it's been a while since I we'll saw go it. to the tippy top of the food chain or something like that, and then you 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 they just milk it. Yeah, it's so good. <sighs> yeah, yeah, Zombieland is a great movie. It I didn't like the I I only saw half the second one and it really didn't. Oh, I liked it. I liked it too. I don't yeah. get me wrong. I, I just I don't think it. I I I'm not a zombie guy <gasps> as much as I thought. I like zombies. Don't get me wrong. I'm more. Ugh, more vampires, but not sparkly vampires. I'm a big but zombie and vampire guy. You can, uh, yeah, Star like Trek, Star all Wars, the monsters, yeah. right? That's, it doesn't that's matter. Right. Okay, what else is on your list? Uh, I've got Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, that's a short movie that really messes with you, right? Yeah, like it just it fucks you up, fucks you up in a like short it, amount of time. It, it, yeah, hello, it pick, pick, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> it picks up quick, and then it just grabs you by the balls and squeezes until it's over. But do you know why that is? I think I have a theory on that. He it's wrote a brilliant movie. It's a brilliant movie, but he wrote it like a play. Oh, yeah. It's one of his first, and I feel that everything else he did after that, he did with the same gusto for monologues and long yeah, yeah. conversations oh, and yeah, exchanges. He definitely, he definitely switched it into long, long movie mode afterwards. But this is more uh, Aaron Sorkin to me than it is Quentin Tarantino. I mean, every every oh, time like I watch fat, it, the fast dialogue. Yeah, the yeah. fast dialogue and the and just just it's just very it's good. There's nothing wrong about it, but I think it was more of a play than it was a film and then he was like, "Okay, now cuz we all know he's a fucking fan who turned to a filmmaker, yeah, right? Like sure. he just watches and makes what he wants." So you can't technically speaking, I'm calling something out that, you know, isn't what, you know, he probably chewed me out for that, but um it it rings true though. Like yeah. it, it just it feels it's just I haven't really seen anything like it since. No. That, nothing that gripped me. Like when I first saw that, I saw it in the theater when it first came out. Like, There's a round the table shot in Swingers that they're 100% being like, hey, yeah. Quentin, we see you, right? Yeah. You're just like, wait, where have I? I've seen this before. Mr. Pink. <laughs> yes. Mr. Blonde. All right, Ramblers, let's get rambling. <laughs> Fuck, look at that tattooed on my face. <laughs> right on your forehead. Right on my forehead. Just everywhere I go. Are you rambling? Uh, what else is on your list? Uh, I've got Source Code. So do I. Blah. Best fucking time travel movie that's not really a time travel movie. It's so good. Like, I first time I saw it, I just, I didn't figure it out by the time I got to the end. Like, I, and that very rarely happens. We have to go into the Source Code. <laughs> 
<laughs> Such a stupid movie. I'm sorry. Jeffrey Wright. <laughs> so good. The Jeff. I, he can't do any wrong, in my opinion. I'm sorry. And like, it, I, I even have a note being like, it's got one of the Farmiga sisters in it. Right? There's Vera and her younger sister who's done stuff in uh, uh, American Horror Story. Her younger sister does. I don't remember. No? I don't. I don't. I'm sorry, my brain to, is. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I don't pay attention to the actors and actresses that much, which is. You're not like, a neurotic person. They're, I, no, they're, I remember their character. Like, I'll remember the character name more than the, like, I'll be like, oh, I know that person from something. They were this guy. He's like the yin to my yang, where I'm like, no, the, the I'll remember all the things about the person, but. Which is great because you guys have the same movies on your list, but you're seeing them from a very different angle. So <laughs> I'm just sitting back and watching this bromance bloom. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, I got the Princess Bride. Yes, as thank you wish, God. as you wish. Finally, something kind, we can agree on. Kind of have to because it's a great movie. There's a TikTok of me putting a mustache on my mustache and hoping that Mandy Patinkin would notice me doing uh, my. You killed my father. For mm. my, for my mom's retirement party, we rented out the Park Theater. And we did, uh, I did, a, I set this all up. We did a screening of The Princess Bride and I made little props for people on their way in. So you could be like the Six Fingered Man or you could be Inigo Montoya or you could be Wesley or you could be Buttercup. And so you had like a crown or a mustache or a glove. And like, and then every, every time that character came on screen, you had to like put up your prop in the air and, and scream something. And uh, I, I have to say it was one of the better parties I've ever been to. <laughs> it was pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and I think my mom really enjoyed it, which was kind of, I guess, the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have. What do I have on mine? I have. Well, source code we've done, so we can we can scratch that off. Uh, I've got. Um, what do I have here? You guys ever heard of Sexy Beast? No. <clears throat> yeah, I have. Ray Winston. Yeah. Ben Kingsley, Ian McShane. I know all the actors. Very good actors, right? <laughs> like all very good at at playing dark characters while at the same time playing Gandhi, for example, right? Yeah. Uh it's it's a crime lord who calls upon one of his uh soldiers for one more job, big big drug job. But Ben Kingsley is a sociopath. And these Ian McShane and Winston are working together and they don't want to take the job on. But they eventually succumb to Kingsley's like madness. They, they just don't want to say no because he'll just like shred them to bits. Right. And it's 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 uh, it's English first of all. So if I'm out, if I'm stepping out of bounds, pardon my <laughs> 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 pardon my my the way I describe this. Uh, but what it is, is it's um, oh, his name's eluding me right now. Lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. Vinny Jones. Not Vinny Jones. We love Vinny Jones. Vinny Jones is not in it. Uh, the director. Uh, uh, Madonna's Gus, ex, Gus, Guy, Guy, Guy Fieri, Guy Fieri, Guy Ritchie, Guy Ritchie. <laughs> Guy you can tell what I've been watching this week. Uh, Guy Ritchie before Guy Ritchie. It's that. It's yeah. it's your slang. It's it's gritty. It's, yeah. gritty. it's that. You know. Um. You know. Strawberry tart. My heart. Right. Like it's that Cockney. Go Cockney rhyme and slang. Thank yeah. you. I'm I'm so nervous. Um, <laughs> and Dan has that effect on people. You, no, I just don't want to make an idiot of myself. <laughs> Anyways, the uh, the exchanges are really smart and 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 right and quick, and it's a high paced crime yeah. uh, caper that's set in like I think Australia. I think is where it is. If I'm if I'm wrong, uh, but it's 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 Winston when he's younger. <laughs> there's this leather. There's this comment that like when Kingsley walks in and he's got his accent, he's not he's not covering with anything else. He says. He says something about his tan. And he says, "When you stand up, I want to pack you like luggage," because <laughs> he's just so leathery brown. Right? <laughs> Movie opens with this really weird scene where, like, and it's this like sexy jazzy beat after a party at Winston's place, and he's got this gorgeous blonde tanned wife like sunbathing, and he comes out in his little want like thong, and there's a giant rock that's like rolled down from the mountains and landed in his pool. <laughs> that's the opening scene of the movie and he's just like sitting there like completely fucking stupefied yeah. that this has happened and then it turns into this crime caper huh. so I, there's, I had that and then I also had uh, Crank <gasps> oh my god I forgot about Crank Jeb Chelios movie right that Crank. is probably my favorite action movie of all time Amy Smart Jason Statham Statham uh, Dwight Yoakam right yeah. Dwight Yoakam is the doctor who played <laughs> in all of them that's the really kooky weird thing uh, so just a good. high-paced thriller. Yeah. Like, what a great, what a great idea for a movie. Like, I just like don't let your heart rate drop while you die. 
right? Good luck. And what do you like, <laughs> but like that's literally the one line pitch that he probably said to the studio. Yeah. It's like speed but inside a person. <laughs> the bus <laughs> is going through your veins. Yeah. The bus is your heart. <laughs> and it can't get to your heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh but yeah and like it's it was so fun the first time, right? Cuz you're just like, oh, he just started fucking her in the middle of the restaurant to keep his heart rate up. Yeah. Oh, he just did a bunch of like it's it it's one of those movies where like you can kind of be like yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah, right? and like, this it just is escalates. Normally yeah. not, normally not cool, but it's cool right now, dude. You do it. Get yeah, it done. Get it's it done. Because Jason's doing it, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, those are those are my and source code, obviously, just because it it packs a lot of questions into a very short period of time, yeah. right? The ethics behind and it repeats quick too, it, so it bounces back and it bounces back. Yeah, you know, it's it it it's it's kind of a poor man's Nolan memento. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Except in order, I guess. I don't know. But I've always thought that that's how we're going to be able to time travel. Right. We're only going to be able to see so much at first. It's not like we're going to Marty McFly this fucking shit no. and like go back to 1982. Like well, we're going to be like four minutes in the future is what we what we have. No, you don't think so? Time travel. If if time travel had ever become possible, somebody would have come back in time. Well. Or it like, it's hard or to argue. It, de- or- it, it depends on your uh, your version of time travel too, right? Because if they travel back, it creates a secondary timeline. So the, in this time, there was no time travel, and then once they get, they make the time, they make the device that time travels, and then they send back. But that would be a different timeline. Ah, ah you're too slow. I don't know. Or <laughs> or maybe it's like primer. Right. Where you can go back in time, but it's only like a few minutes and you have to spend that time not being there. I'm so impressed that so many of us know Primer. <laughs> like it's such a sleeping giant for when, time travel. When I listened to the podcast and they were talking about it and she and you were talking about Primer and she texted me and I was like, bitch, I've been trying to get you to watch this movie <laughs> for years. We now you want to watch it? <laughs> so we watched it. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and it was great. And then like three weeks later, I was like, I think I have, I think I understand it. And then I had like a whole thing about it. No, I've even Googled it, been on the Wikipedia. Like it's psh, like, <laughs> I, I, I've read how and what the thing is and I don't get it. Like it's, it, I, I don't get or the, the movie anyway. Like I get the concept of how they were time traveling, but yeah. the, the, the movie where they ended it, like, how it ended like i i we have a different opinion of how it ended. it's true the fungus i'm still lost on every time i watch it i'm like what does this fungus (laughs) have to but like i realized the fungus was something that was happening it was like growing at a certain reason yeah but that's how they were tracking how it was going through time was that things that took longer this thing somehow went back in time and then started again yeah and went forward and had long had a longer period of time to grow the fungus. Yeah. Because it did the thing where it went back and she says it goes through a full day. Yeah. yeah. But it goes back into a point in that day. Yeah, man, I fucking That's don't a crazy know. movie. It's a great movie. Okay, so I have one more and I can't believe you didn't pick this one because I actually this is one of Dan's favorite movies, as far as I understand it. But uh in Bruges. I honestly You're not a nice man. <laughs> You're not a nice man. Yeah. But I honestly I that is one of the movies that I I think of when I think of a movie that I felt like it was longer than it was because so much awesome stuff happened and I was really really into the characters probably because there's only really the two of them. So it gives yeah. you a lot of time to like really develop that sort of like love and uh I don't know attachment to the characters. It was a movie that Dan introduced me to, so of course I love it because of that, and um, and it's only I think it's an hour and forty minutes. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's quick. It's short. I didn't I didn't realize it was a shorty to be honest. Short, with you. but exactly because there's only the two characters, so it gives you all the time to fall in love with them, and it feels like a longer movie. But they yeah they pack a lot of excitement into it, just a little bit. Yeah, no, uh, cocaine and uh, murder, murder and espionage. Fun a lot stuff. of a lot of Ralph Fiennes f bombs. Yeah, that's, my, that's one of my favorite sequences of f bombs. <laughs> swearing so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. It's such a good movie. I I really love it. So. I yeah, and like it, I I will do I will do a buck forty, a buck twenty, when I'm doing something, right? Like when I want a background piece. I feel like you can't watch In Bruges in the background. No, well, you, <laughs> but that's the, there's not a lot of movies out there, the shorter movies that I want to rewatch over and over. Yeah, that's why I put them on in the background. That's like uh, I'm not gonna sit and give you the whole time, but I'll be like, I'll I'll tune in as I'm walking by, and I'm uh, like, yeah, we don't talk about Fight Club, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like, right. 
you the, see it enough that it just becomes part of your existence. There's so much content out there, though. I oh, thought, I, I try and throw something I haven't seen on in the background, and then if it starts to grab me, I'll either stop, I'll pay attention, or I'll turn it off and watch. I gotta it try that trick. That's, I'm always, uh, that's someone who doesn't have anxiety, you know, and a, a person who has anxiety needs familiarity. And that's even though there's a lot of content out there, my my anxiety ridden brain just needs Gilmore Girls she's been over and Gilmore over. Girls, and yeah, no, you know what? In, in the other Buffy room, the Vampire like, oh. Slayer. <laughs> pirate sees a pirate. I'll put on Westworld and be like, oh, the future of mankind is doomed. But I'm like, this feels good. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's comfortable. <laughs> right. it's calm, I, like, I, I, start, I do Star Trek next gen. See, uh. like and that's that's that show. That's that fucking show. Six Feet Under is also that show for me. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Nip Tuck is also that show for me. Um, yeah, there's just Lost is also that show. Like you can, you just you're mar- you, you had emotions that didn't. Oh, Lost is was amazing. It, I, le- I've it been left trying me. Trying to get her to watch. She hasn't seen it, and I'm trying to get her to watch it. But I'm like, we just watch it and don't watch season seven. <laughs> yeah, but then. Once you watch season seven, then you don't want to rewatch it, which is where I'm at. Like, I remember the first four seasons being amazing. Amazing. Like, um, I rewatched them. Every time the new season would come out, I'd watch one and two again, or one, two, three again. Easily. And then season five or six came out, and I'm like, um. And then season seven came out, and I don't even think I fit. I think I finished, maybe finished it, but I was like, ugh. Sucks. That polar bear in the first episode just yeah. had like a polar bear on a tropical island. The plane crash was pretty impressive. Was for its time on TV, uh-huh. and and just just not. It was like one of those first. I don't mean to be insulting, but it was one of those first shows for public access that really made you think. Yeah, you know, it like was, you didn't. Was... You you couldn't go into Lost and be like I'm gonna passively watch this and no. be like fucking watch this bitch. I am participating actively. Although yeah, I, I yes. do think a lot of their plot lines and storylines they didn't know what they were doing yet. I think they're like let's throw a polar bear in there, and then <laughs> later on they're like we need to explain this polar bear. Well, that makes it kind of fun though. <laughs> <laughs> It's like if they don't know yeah. what's going on, how can you? Yeah, I do think some of it, some of it for sure. It, it was very clever. I loved it. Damon Lindelof. I mean, is Damon Lindelof for a re- like? Did you see The Watchmen? No, give it a, give it a whirl. I read the comic and I loved it, or well, the graphic novel, and I loved it. And then I watched the movie. Yeah, I saw the movie too. And I was like, "This was awful." <laughs> so everybody who read the graphic novel and hated the movie I've met now likes the show a lot. Okay, because it's a continuation of the comic. Oh, like after the it's squ- post squid, post squid, oh. and it references everything pre squid. Oh. oh, I'll give it a get a try. And what happens? with the squid and everybody's bitch with each other still there years later. Oh. And I'll have to give it a shot. It will it you will feel so weird at first because it won't feel familiar, but then they will slowly drop like 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 Rorschach's mask for example. Mm-hmm. In the show, the opening sequence is um the Oklahoma massacre of 19 19- 1919 I think maybe 1918 it was a part of America where um where black people had thrived at the time and it was like it was called Black Wall Street because it was such a, a, a economically prosperous area of America and just like historically when people come in and fuck shit up yeah, sounds, and they were like sounds normal you can't have a chance at life right yeah. and they slaughtered all these people and that's where the story starts that's where it's anchored is in that massacre oh and then fast forward to current time in Oklahoma, Don Johnson is a sheriff. <laughs> and uh, to fast forward this, it's after everything has happened with the squid. So you open with Rorschach and people who sympathize with Rorschach as modern day terrorists. Huh. Like Rorschach's message has been churned through the media too much. Yeah. And the dregs of society are sympathizing with Rorschach and have become like domestic terrorists and the cops have to ask for permission to use their weapons and they don't show their face because cops are hunted and it's all because there are no watchmen left all right. because who watches the watchmen, right? That's the whole, yeah. So yeah. it's, it's interesting. Anyways, that's your watchman break with David Lindelof. <laughs> um, do we cover all your, sh- do we get yeah, to all your short ass movies? Like, I like the Disney movies and then yeah. I like in Bruges, which, you know, very much the same, the same kind of movie. Yeah. Disney, 
slash in Bruges. I look at I look at Ariel. Yeah. And I and I see uh, Brendan Gleeson. Exactly. Right. Same I think same. All Disney movies should have more cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> and more, but there's there you know quite a bit of murder in Disney movies actually. Yeah, there's lots. I was going to say and murder, but that's probably actually kind of real. Yeah, I've I've just been at parties <laughs> where I've seen people doing coke off of like Disney movies. Disney movies. <laughs> I'm just but like, yeah. how dare it? Come on. Like, could you not, like, It's because the, the, the shiny plastic kyber, yeah. that makes perfect sense to me. No, I get the surface. I understand the application. I'm just like, can you not pick, like, I, I don't know, Dr. Shivago? Guys, like, what is cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. It is, it is after dark. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's move on. Let's Because I think we're just going to fucking find ourselves in a rabbit hole here and go down a <laughs> cul-de-sac, whatever that means. So monologues. <laughs> was second on the list here. Um, monologue for for a listener. I mean, I I don't we I I don't assume that everybody knows that a monologue is this part of a of a series, but or a show or a movie or whatever the fuck you're watching or a play. But a monologue <laughs> is just defined as a very long portion of a conversation from one of the actors. Could be back and forth long, right? They both have long parts. I don't think it can. You I think that's a dialogue. I actually, I'm on your side with this one. I was showing her what the one, one of my favorite ones, she's like, this isn't a monologue. No, that's a dialogue. I under, no, dialogue is dialogue, but the monologue is the length that the... that the mm-hmm. One person. Sure. One person can talk for seven minutes. Yep. That's a monologue inside of a dialogue yes that's fine yeah absolutely. that's i think that's where we yeah. are we can bridge that that yeah it's if it goes back and forth like back and forth between one person back and, and forth too one, much then no like if i'm like hey how's it going and you're like yeah good that's not a no, that's not a exactly. monologue that's a dialogue between two people yeah but anyways there's a i have a good i have a good thing on that but anyway <laughs> you go first because or do you want me to go first because i'm i'm like i you can go okay I'll, yeah. all right i'll take this one i just want to get out of the way <laughs> so uh, we have picked our favorite monologues. We're going to talk about why we like them. We're going to talk about what's great about a monologue and all that stuff shortly. But to start these, I figured, wouldn't it be fun if we read our monologues? I yeah, it would. I don't, I don't know if I agree with you here, but I'll give it a shot. I'm, I was going to do character. I'm going to try oh, to do I'm a little character. Doing. Oh, I'm doing character for sure. I'm going to try to do cadence. I think I can do cadence more than I can do character mm-hmm. because I don't enjoy fucking in an, uh, an all-white room in front of a video <laughs> camera, if you know where I'm going. <laughs> If you pick up what I'm putting down here. So my monologue that I picked was the morning routine from American Psycho. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I thought we were supposed to guess it. I guess I won't be able to guess it now. Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did fuck that up, didn't I? Oh, well. I guess the morning, morning routine. routine. The morning routine. Yeah. The morning routine. Uh. <laughs> so back to the morning routine. Uh, so this is one of my this is one of my favorite ones because it it introduces you to the character. Right by the character. The character's introducing himself to you while at the same time not introducing everything to you at once. Like it 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 gives you a really good sense of who I don't think I've seen this movie. Really? Yeah. Let's do it. I live in the American Gardens building on West 81st Street. My name is Patrick Bateman. I'm 27 years old. I believe in taking care of myself and a balanced diet and a rigorous exercise routine. In the morning, if my face is a little puffy, I'll put on an ice pack while doing my stomach crunches. I can do a thousand now. After I remove the ice pack, I use a deep pore cleanser on my face. (laughs) Hang on. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) Cut. Back to one. You had it. I know I had it. All right. Uh, (laughs) I use a deep pore cleanser lotion. In the shower, I use a water-activated gel scrub, then a honey almond body scrub, and and then on my face, an exfoliating gel scrub. Then I apply a herb mint facial mask, which I leave on for 10 minutes while I prepare the rest of my routine. I always use an aftershave lotion with little or no alcohol because alcohol dries out your face and makes you look older. Then moisturizer, then an anti-aging eye balm followed by a final moisturizing protective lotion. There is an idea of a Patrick Bateman, some kind of abstraction, but there is no real me only an entity, something illusory. And though I can hide my cold gaze and you can shake my hand and feel my flesh gripping yours, and maybe you can even sense our lifestyles are prob- probably comparable, I am simply not there. Nice. <laughs> yeah, love it. Uh, I almost <laughs> one took that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because it's fucking creepy because who does that when they meet so you? So creepy, yeah. Right? For the first time, it's just... Fuck, I don't know. Anyways, that's that was the that was the one that came 
off a list, obviously. I always I like my lists because I need to see things, right? Yeah, okay. I need to see how things kind of wait up in other people's eyes, and then I'm like, okay, what's in mine here? And then I, I weight it down because I just can't like, I can't pull from the recesses of my mind like I used to. <laughs> I looked at a few lists, right? Like but it's then, just, yeah. and that we're real people here, right? We're not fucking pros. I don't, I don't, we don't pretend to be, well, we pretend to be, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so whatever. So yeah, that's, that's my pick. And it, and just arguably because you are introduced to the madness that is Patrick Bateman and you, <clears throat> I need another drink that you, uh, don't know unless you've read the novel and even in the novel, like it's not, it's, it's yeah. Uh, I just, I love American Psycho. It explains who we are as a person. It's a movie about like just greed and yeah. and and gluttony and and excess and and so many things during the '90s when it was like this is when it was like cool to, you know, gold plate your dick or yes. I don't know sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, um, we'll let you we'll let Dan go last. Yeah, sure. So uh, I definitely did not use a list. When I heard this, uh, when I heard this this segment, I knew right away what my monologue was going to be, and uh, so no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Are we guessing, or am I telling you ahead well, of time? Well, yeah. See, I already fucked that up. Okay, so, so I'll go ahead of time. Yeah. So my favorite movie, and I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast before or not, but my favorite movie is A League of Their Own. Ah! It is my most favorite movie ever, and there is a scene in A League of Their Own during the tryouts for the All-American Women's Baseball League where there is a like a social commentary radio reporter named Miss Maida Gillespie and she yeah. is it's a montage over these girls playing ball and uh, and the monologue so here here we go <laughs> she's got a very distinctive voice so I'm going to do my best here um, careers in higher education are leading to the masculinization of women with enorm- enormously dangerous consequences to the home, the children, and our country. When our boys come home from war, what kind of girls will they be coming home to? <laughs> and now, the most disgusting example of this sexual confusion, Mr. Walter, Walter Harvey of Harvey Bars is presenting us with women's baseball. <laughs> right here in Chicago, young girls plucked from their families are gathered at Harvey Field to see which one of them can be the most masculine <laughs> mr harvey like your candy bars you're completely nuts <laughs> <laughs> no question that is the best monologue of all time i love league of their own oh it's my favorite movie absolutely are you crying no <laughs> are you crying no crying in baseball no crying in baseball <laughs> fucking what's his name what's tom hanks's character's name in that oh he's um, um it's it's Jimmy Dugan. It's Jimmy Dugan. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Good old Irish name. Yeah. And so, you know what? And Jimmy the, Dukes. The cast of that movie. Madonna. Madonna, Rosie O'Donnell, Gina Davis, Tom Hanks. Um, Laurie Lovett. Petty? Uh, yeah. And Lo- 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 John Lovitz. John, John, yeah. Yeah. Just so, so good. Everything about that movie is fantastic. So, there you go. That's Thank my, you very much for monologue. your performance. Anytime. I uh, have a feeling we're going to get some calls. <laughs> <laughs> By that, I mean on the voicemail telling people to be like, don't do that again. Yeah, please stop. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was funny. Anyways, um, what uh, what'd you bring for us, Dan? Well, you know what? I'm just going to read mine, and I'm going to see if you guys can guess it, because I didn't write very much down, because it's hopefully it's pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> A.K.A. I don't want to do this long. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese submarine slammed two torpedoes in her side, Chief. We was coming back from the island, <sighs> Twin Delay. we just delivered the bomb, the Hiroshima bomb. 1,100 men went into the water. Vessel went down in 12 minutes. Didn't see the first shark for about half an hour. Tiger. 13 footer you know how i know that in the water chief you can tell by looking from the dorsal to the tail what we didn't know is that our bomb mission was so secret no distress signal had been sent they didn't even list us as overdue for a week very first light chief sharks come cruising by so we formed ourselves into tight groups that's what i wrote Fucking A, Quint. Fucking A. <laughs> All this entire time I was like, it's Robert Shaw. I know that's Robert Shaw. Why can't I fucking remember his goddamn name? <laughs> fucking A. That's that sets such a tone for the shark coming. Yeah, like and that was probably the first introduction of like a, a 
monologue that in movies that I was watching growing up. Like that was when like yeah. it, it changed the movie. Like up until then it's like, oh there's a shark and then they're just on this <laughs> boat. Oh and, there's a shark. Shark. and then I'm like, Oh, this shark's gonna eat him. Oh yeah. And uh, he knows what's coming. That's what makes it so much mm. worse. It's like not only is it a shark, but he fucking knows sharks are bad news. D- yeah. Our uh, kids have asked if they could watch Jaws, and we're like, mm, maybe not yet. You know what? Uh, Our younger kid is a bit of a psycho. Like, I think yeah. I think she'd love it. And I don't think she'd be particularly scared. Our older kid, probably not interested. No. But I think our younger one is, she's the one, like, when we play D&D, the bodies aren't even cold yet before. She's like, I want to loot the bodies. <laughs> so she's like, you're I stab him d- six times in the head. You're still fighting this guy. <laughs> We're gonna loot the body. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hi, yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I was just having that. Well, actually, if you, yeah, uh, Jaws plays a big deal in in this home, very much so. Mostly for a scary movie I watch with my mom. Oh yeah, yeah right. it was one of those you know, ones growing up as a kid. Like we, there was a VHS got passed around my school. <laughs> <laughs> Love and, it. And like, I was like twelve or thirteen or something. Like when the f- tapes were first out, and we like we all watched it, and then we talked about it in lunchroom. Like the, the night, over the next. Did you see when he cut like, the shark open and then everything like, fell out? Did you see cut the shark open? <laughs> and yeah, it was my one of my. Fr- yeah, I didn't. I live. I grew up on the ocean, and I did. Like, there's no sharks in the English Ocean, but I did not go back in that water for a while. I haven't. Jumped into the deep end and not swam fast since. <laughs> <laughs> like I think I, t- I, always, I didn't even want to take baths for a little bit after that. Like whoosh. fucking Pan Am pool has jaws in it. Whenever I'm in the <laughs> deep end, <laughs> not joking. Uh, the mo- he, so you you said something before we got into this monologue versus dialogue being both long. Um, the haunting of Bly Manor. Oh yeah. And Mike Fisher, Mike Fletcher. Um, can you Google that for me while I'm talking here? The yeah. director of Bly Manor and all of those series is one of the best writer directors out there. Mike, I'm sorry, I can't remember your last name. And uh, his wife plays in all three of them. And the third one I'm talking about is actually uh, the, it's not even, there's The Haunting of Hill House, The Haunting yeah. of Bly Manor, and then the third, did you guys watch these? Yeah. We watched The Haunting of Hill House. Okay, so you've seen what this guy can yeah. do when it and with what his wife can do as well too and i that's when i really started to appreciate it which is very recently like i i never really looked at monologues as something that trapped you even took you what is it Fucked. mike flanagan thank you You're welcome. um it really shocked the shit out of me at how much she took me right out of the story i was watching and then took me to another level of it like right. i came back to an, a very intense show but the way he moves the camera so slow onto her and 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 fucking hell, those just made me go. I really want to watch some of my favorite mm. monologues again because it it it's a it's a trick, right? Well, it's ha- it's such a fun um, device to use. Like I studied classics in university, and so a ton of Shakespeare, just an absolute ton of Shakespeare, and every he invented tragedy, the fucking thing. Yeah, every Shakespearean tragedy, even a bunch, most of the comedies, they have a monologue or two, and it moves it moves the <laughs> It moves the depth of the character along in such a good way, and it, um, and you can spend so much time just like thinking about them. There's a reason that they're the most famous pieces from any any Shakespeare play, right? Like when you think of Othello, when you think of Hamlet, you know, to to be or not to be, that is the question. Um, and so, even when you think of like Romeo and Juliet, Romeo, Romeo, where far art thou, Romeo? Is right? a rose a rose by any? Yeah, other a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Exactly. Yeah. <coughs> Othello, <laughs> no, but yeah, you're right. Like, and it, it 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 came from that, and then bled into film because, well, what is film but a play that's that looks better than a play? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I can't believe we didn't mention uh, a few good men though, as well. That's <sighs> well, okay, that was that your was that your second pick? That's that's I told my lady. Yeah. I got I got three down here on the list. And that was that courtroom one. scene yeah. goes down in history as yeah. you want to know honor, you want to know code, yeah, right? Just, I had, uh, I've talked about this multiple times, which is why I didn't make it my primary, but I had your move chief from Goodwill Hunting. Yep. That one is the, is the fucking quiverly, quivering lip, ugly cry. (laughs) Daddy, please come find me and hug me. I need to rekindle my relationship with you. Bullshit that that scene with Robin Williams can, can pull out of me. It's absolutely mind bending. It's been you know. a minute since I've seen that one. Oh, it it destroys me. 
It absolutely destroys me. And like, I, it, it really is a testament to like watching somebody go, like Quint go somewhere. Yeah. Right? He's just off. Yeah, he's no, no longer connected with like the moment. It's like he's there while he's there in his mind while he's telling that story. And it's doubly scary, like you mentioned, where he is the only one, or you mentioned it, Emily, where he's the only one who's seen it. He knows what a great white looks like. Like, Brody's, yeah. I want to be back in my beach house drinking wine. <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, so it, it really does fuck with you. Uh, is, like, if, is, is, is one too long? I mean, I've seen, I've seen some one-take shots. I'm sure we all have. I don't know if anything's coming out of our brains right now, but, like, it, I, I mean, short of a Shakespearean remake, I don't think they usually last more than, like, three to five minutes. No, that's, I mean, that also feels like, three minutes feels like a long time, too, when you're in a movie. Like, that's a lot of dialogue. Yeah, like Monsieur Lapidi from Inglorious Bastards, right? Mm-hmm. You can know, have some of your glorious milk. Like, those are monologues, yeah. but that's a dialogue, yeah. right? That's your, that's your long exchange. Anyways. I'm uncomfortable just thinking about it. That, that's how you know it's a great movie, right? Because it's yeah. making me squirm in my seat just talking about it. I want my scalps. I want my 20 scalps. <laughs> Yeah. All right, moving on. So, uh, third topic uh, was was Dan's. Excuse me, I should not drink carbonated drinks. We're doing <laughs> this is like the fifth time I've burped into this thing. Uh, Dan's choice, bartender's choice, first timer's choice, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, you want to talk about something that we've never talked on about on here. So, uh, we can now rate the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I just want to reiterate that at this point. Uh, so for all you Trekkies out there who've been waiting for us to kind of dive into the like we I think we used the replicator for a debate once and Martin used it in a restaurant that was Star Trek themed. I think that was the closest we got to talking about Star Trek. So uh, first question, like, have you been a Trekkie since birth? Like, since a young? Uh, yeah, I grew up with it as a kid. Um, I never really loved the original series, but I uh, started Star Date. Over- Four, six, eight, yeah. two, five. Some of them are great, but like I grew, I started on the uh, next gen, and then uh, Deep Space Nine and Voyager, and uh, I used when Deep Space Nine and Voyager were being released, I just started my first jobs, and I had disposable income, so I'm buying all the DVDs the, as they come out. Sixty dollars single copy. <laughs> yeah, like it's just like I was like, I loved it. It was great, um, <clears throat> and. Uh, then it kind of all went away for a while, and there's all this new track that's back, and it's it's pretty pretty. Uh, there's a lot of new track. Okay, but so it's, I know you don't love. I actually don't know the answer to this. I know you don't love the new track shows, and that's like, totally fine. But um, it's okay. But what about <laughs> what about the movies? Like, what did you think about sort of the? Why did you reboot it? Like, put another ship with another captain and another crew in that universe. With all this new visuals, it doesn't need to be Kirk. Kirk was already Kirk. Kirk did his stuff. Yeah. We had a show about it already. Like, yeah. Get, get, they even get, brought get, Kirk to to uh, Picard, <laughs> didn't they? Didn't they cross that? In Generations, yeah. In yeah. the movie, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, it's just, I don't get it. Like, why Why would you do that? So that's for the movies. I, The movies are entertaining if I pretend they're not Star Trek. And then I enjoy them. <laughs> pretend what do you pretend that they are? <laughs> just a generic... It's a puppet show. Just okay. a generic space show. Okay, so I have one new Star Trek show that's really good. Lower Decks. Lower Decks is really good. Yeah, Lower Decks is that's amazing. That's Seth MacFarlane, right? Yeah. Or, no, 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 no. Seth MacFarlane, it's, you're thinking of the Orville. Yeah, uh, um, it's just a cartoon. It's a cartoon. What I mean? There's even su- too much Star Trek-like shit. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a, a cartoon, cartoon, but it's really funny. It it, makes, it's quick. It, it, it's just basically, it, it concentrates on the... Uh, couple of crewmen from the lower decks and the the captain and stuff are doing all this shit and there's alarms going off and they're down there rolling around in there thinking like what's going on we don't fucking know <laughs> and then they'll tell us if it's important and then it's just it's fun it's super fun but yeah. the um but it's with the new ones like discovery uh they went from being a show about a bunch of characters doing missions and things to be, be in the michael burnham show where she has two speeches and cries once an episode. <laughs> Speaking of monologues. Yeah, like if you want a monologue, watch Discovery. Like, ugh. And it's funny because I'll come home and he'll Wrong be watching place. it and he'll be like, I hate this show. I'm like, and yeah, you're always watching it. <laughs> yeah, bad pizza is still pizza. <laughs> That's true. But I also, I follow uh, a podcast that uh, 
does it episode by episode. Track. Oh, okay. And they listen to the episode and talk over it, similar to what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, and they finishing up next gen like right now there are like four episodes left of it to go and they've branched out into the din voyager and enterprise but they're sure. also doing discovery gotta and, watch it and so they're doing it too and they're like this show's hot garbage <laughs> you know what's <laughs> worse hot garbage is season two of picard i was yeah. so excited for that show i also grew up with tng my family watched tng we would that was a thing we would all do together when i was little my dad is a big trekkie he had a communicator pen we had like a tng big like beautiful poster in the basement to boldly go where no one has gone before it was just such a part of my childhood and i was ridiculously excited for picard and i was into it in the first season i thought okay whatever i'll take what they're gonna give me totally fine and I, I wasn't crazy about it but i really was like i was bound and determined to like it but this this season of picard that we're in right now it hurts like dan's like oh we've got a new picard and i'm like oh yeah i guess we got to watch that eh <laughs> then they, they brought q back right yeah, yeah. they did they but did. not in any meaningful way no and it's like they like, ran out of money or something like that whole bunch of this season of picard is shot now two, two years in the future two, like, they're uh, currently in like, la in, in like 2024. 2024 so it's not even in space and he met guinan in a street that's called 10 forward 10 forward yeah or the bar is well, called the bar, 10 forward the bar, no the bar the, i don't know what the bar is oh. called, but the street it was on forward street and 10th street yeah and i'm like well that's stupid because she's not been it's in the past she's not been on the ship yet she doesn't know she's gonna be working in uh, oh, that deck hurts. ten forward section. It's, like, it's, it's ridiculous. They just sh- shoehorn shit in. Like they had a car chase. They had a fucking car chase, and not pups. even a good one. No, I'm like, they I just wa- shoehorn. Remember what I said in. at the beginning? Pew pew in space. This is not pew pew in space. No, like, okay. And they've it's like, again. It just doesn't. I don't know where it's going. And not that that's a bad thing, but it's just it. It like if you don't have a story hire some writers or something i don't know it's just and if it, you don't have a space story don't make it star trek yeah i don't know like i knew that there was such a big push for when they announced that picard was a thing like there was so much excitement yeah and it just it could be great like, see, it, like it could be great with q and because it's got the board queen in it as well yeah and the surrounding cast is cast is really good isn't lavar burton coming back for, for Picard's third, season, for, for the three, third, for the yeah, third they season. Booked, yeah. And, and then Michael, Michael, whoever for Worf is coming back to it. Dorn. Michael Dorn, I think, is coming back. I don't know about that. Like, I don't know at this point if I'm even going to watch the first. No, I, I, yeah, you look like you've lost. You faith. can throw like, out all of my like childhood memories it, at it, and honestly, I don't think you could revive it at no. this point. It's like at this, I'm going to watch Picard till the end. But like, I'm on season four of Discovery, and season two was medium. The beginning of season, t- uh, sorry, me- season one was medium. Beginning of season two was great. It was Captain Pike and it was episodic and it was really like, it was great. I'm like, this is track. And then all of a sudden, they've, again, why is it set before Kirk? And then all of a sudden, Spock's on board. And then they're in a m- different universe and now they're in the future. Now they're so far in the future that what travel really doesn't I really want anymore. this to be there in a simulation and this has all been like a. It's time travel. And yeah. Stuff. No, yeah. no. It's but... like Dallas where like. <laughs> you wake up in the shower. Yeah. And JR isn't dead. You know, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'd be I, sad. I feel like they're. <laughs> I'd be like, I've spent so much time with this. <laughs> so much commitment. They're trying to do something that they don't need to do. Like they're trying to become a different type of show and nobody wants that. Star Trek yeah. is monster of the week. Like we fight the bad guys. We win. Like. Who's sleeping with the green girl. Exactly. Yeah. And then there's like some sexy aliens and like maybe a little bit of like <coughs> through line with the characters that like grow and develop across the seasons. But pretty much you can jump in at any episode at any time and you get a full 44 minute story um, where the good guys win in space in the end. Yeah. Or a or two parter if you need to. Yeah. Or, or and give me it to be continued if we have to. Well, you're sure. like you're, you're the Borg through line from the middle of the next generation when. Like it was set over the entire season, but it was only three episodes that had Borg in it, like in the beginning, the middle, and the end. And everything was an episode, like it was still Monster of the Week, but then in the middle, it'd be like the Borg, and they're like, oh, we dealt with these, yeah, like two months ago. <laughs> and so, like, it was, they had the through lines, but they were very weak. And so, <sighs> it's like a show like Next Gen, like, I can hit random and any episode from any season, it's as, it's it's its own story. 
and I can watch it. It completes itself. But I can't just jump into a season three, episode eight of Discovery because what the fuck was going on for the first seven episodes? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not somebody who I've got an uh, affection for Trek, but I just as a as a watcher. As somebody who's standing back noticing, yeah. and I'm just like, holy shit, the resurgence of Star Trek is is There's a lot of it right now. It's a lot of it, and I'm and I'm like, I'm not married to this. Yeah. They've got a kids show, Prodigy, too. I haven't watched that one. It's got Janeway in it. Uh. Um, and there's, I did hear about another one, but I can't remember any details about it right now. Well, I just wanna, I just wanna like say to every Star Trek fan out there including yourself like this is how we feel with what happened with star wars oh, except star wars came it's back coming and did back some good stuff it's yeah. coming back it's yeah. it's it, i'm just for yeah. for two movies it fucking sucked yeah eight and nine Five movies eight and nine uh <laughs> <laughs> although uh, we could go here but all those star destroyers at the end of the last one just popping out of the planet um, who the fuck yeah. built those um, like where yeah. does that come from? i have a lot of questions yeah like those <laughs> this should be movies four five and six and then the TV shows. Yeah. Get yeah. rid of all of the other movies. Yeah, like when, if I ever need to show this to a person, I'm going to be like, we can skip 7, 8, 9, yeah. and we can go right to Mandalorian, and we can go right to uh, uh, Boba, Boba Fett. Boba Fett, Fett, Fett thank yeah. you. I, they Man, bled together. Man, Come on. Yeah, I can't it, tell the difference between both. Where well, Boba Fett's ass ends and, and, and Man. Mandalorian saber begins I don't know yeah they were both in each other's stuff yeah. uh, but you know what I think they brought the Mandalorian into Book of Fett because people didn't like Book of Fett and so they brought the Mandalorian storyline in to revive it which I don't particularly agree with I liked Book of Fett a lot they had to have filmed it before they released it alright alright back to one back to Star Trek <laughs> Star Trek. No, no 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 that's fine that's fine that's fine um, but as a my point was was as just as somebody who it, is watching this and and seeing Star Wars like just tenderized to to nothing at some points. Um I feel bad for diehard Trek people cuz they're just really marketing on the Star Trek shit and then jumping out of nowhere and being like, "Yeah, we're going to make a fourth movie and yeah. you know, JJ is going to do it." And like JJ announced it and then it, like the cast are like, "We are?" <laughs> right? You know, what? and I'm like, "This is this is starting to get clunky." Yeah, and and then when well, when you do that in the public eye, it doesn't put a lot of faith in what I thought. I thought those movies were okay. I really do. I, I like the movies. Yeah, the movies I thought were okay. But again, like, I just my only point is like, why is it Kirk? I like it a, could, I like I, a reboot. I liked your idea. I like that. I like that. Maybe we we have just a whole new story, a whole new captain, got a whole universe that's pre built, like and with so much history and canon in it, like just. Another you can ship in there. you can retcon a new ship that yeah. nobody's ever heard of. You can retcon a new team. You like, can well, you could just you make it the Stargazer. Wouldn't it be like, fun? Make it something that people know the ship of, like it's been in another movie. Yeah, like, and then just be like, that's here. We'll follow these guys for a while. But like, wouldn't it be fun if they referenced Kirk? Yeah, and, like like these guys are like we read about Kirk, right? Yeah, you know, or or we like read about other, Picard, the right? Other like, class that like came up with Kirk right? through the Academy and Kirk's just, like, Kirk's second. Yeah. Right, the, the, the guy who the, the guy who finished. I want to watch this. I want to watch that show. Right? Yeah. You want you want familiarity, but new, but new. Yeah. You know, that's bit. called that's called a requel. I was gonna say, what do they call <laughs> it in Scream? A requel. <laughs> yeah. But Wait, you know what? It this works ends badly. It works though. <laughs> like if that's if that's what you're gonna do, if you're gonna recycle old shit, then give us stories that pertain to old shit. Yeah. Don't recycle shit for the sake of something new because you're putting a. Fuck, we're getting in the weeds again. All in all. Going back to your question, yeah, uh, I've got seven seasons of uh, Next Gen. I've got seven seasons of Deep Space Nine. Seven seasons of Voyager. Four seasons of Enterprise. I'm all right. Like that's. Yeah. By the time I've watched them all, I can flip it back to the beginning again. Uh, there's a website out there called the Chronological Project, and it had lists all of the shows again. In I, I think I've got I think you I've got a thing for time. Chronological order, yeah, and so be... it lists. I get it. The, it lists them all, so you can start at the beginning. So it starts at Enterprise, and then it goes to the first season of Discovery, then the original series, then Next Gen. Yeah, no. Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and it and it puts which one, so you can watch them by star date, and so I do that. Too. By star date, love it. Yes, please. Um, I remember I had a, a model. Uh, Enterprise, like a plastic glue model I put together. That thing traveled everywhere with me until I was like 20. 
Uh, just kidding. You still have it right now. Yeah. Sitting right beside him. <laughs> <laughs> then I had a transport <laughs> ship too that like you, that would that came with Data and Jordy. Yeah, I remember I had that toy. Like, but I was just like, cool shit. Yeah. But I, yeah, I just I hate to see a, a legacy of something pieced out, stripped think, down, and I think it'll come back around. I think it's just where TV is right now. Like that's what people are people are. Yeah, watching. Every, we don't want anything new. We want our childhood rehashed for us over and over again. Well, speaking no, of childhood, this is a perfect time to transfer into this new shit that went down this oh, week. Oh, yeah. There was a story about a guy. I think everybody's seen at some point or another. And I think it's the one thing that maybe we'll all have maybe a... Like, if we tried, we'd have a chance at getting at. But, like, the the news article that I'm prefacing here way too long is that the Star Wars kid is back in pop culture conversation. And the Star Wars kid, if you remember, if you're of a certain age... Was a was one of the first viral videos on YouTube where this guy was making a, a video, I think, for school or something. They were like fucking around, right? like reenacting. They reenact. A, it was what a, we do a now. Lightsaber fight. It's what everybody fucking does on TikTok. Yeah, which is the funny thing. But before TikTok. But before TikTok, so it was weird. And he, I think he was someone found it right and like yeah put it online and he was made fun of like yeah. pretty incessantly yeah for being the coolest kid in the world like for doing a lightsaber fight which. Duh. And like he's, if you can like if you don't know the context of a thing, then yeah, it looks like a really nerdy kid is is wanting to be a Jedi. I have a fucking lightsaber. I'm yeah, forty years old. Like, Looking at it right now, nerd. Right. <laughs> Proud to wear that badge. Yeah. See. Oh, right. We both have lightsabers on our arms. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Like yeah. it's just it's so fucking disgusting that that at the time wasn't like yeah way to go dude. This is awesome. It was just a bunch of assholes who were like, "Well, kids are mean." Yeah, kids, kids are kids. Are, people are mean. People are mean. Yeah, the internet is mean. Yeah, don't put it out on the internet if you don't want criticism. Uh, except us, just love us. But I was like, call, uh, call our listener line and yeah. tell us nice things only. <laughs> don't be mean. But I remember, I remember hearing about. Did you guys remember this when you were when you were younger? Like, do you, does, does this video? I remember or, the video. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't read the news article. I like skimmed it. Yeah. No. Just, sure. Yeah. It's just it was a new. The, the the point is, is that I, I was like, a have like I've gone kind of viral. I've gone small viral. Tell us about going viral. How did it make you feel? It's, and what was it? So when weed became legal, that Halloween, me and a friend dressed up as Jay and Silent Bob. Nice. And it's no, it's no secret here that. Um, I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was, I was Jay, obviously. <laughs> uh, no, um, I was, I, I was, I was Bob. And we no. went to a social and then someone was like, you guys should, uh, I'm, and I'm going to post this. Like I finally fucking posted the, the Kevin Smith thing on our YouTube page. And then I was like, yeah, I should post the podcast episode. Sorry to everybody who hasn't heard that yet. Um, anyways, we went to Delta Nine the day that we became legal and <laughs> hung outside Delta Nine like they hang outside. Fifteen bucks, little man. Put that shit in my hand. I'll show you the video after. <laughs> Sean, Sean knew it cold. Oh, is that is that what he did? That yeah. song? Yeah. If that money doesn't show, then you owe me, owe me, owe. Yeah. And like I'm sitting there doing the head bob. Jungle love. Yeah. 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 Oh, we, oh, we, oh. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. The whole video, and um. Yeah, the we we had a friend at the time who worked at Delta Nine, and he was like, "I'll pay you hundred bucks and give you a sweater." And I was like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> I'd have done it for a weed. Yeah, I would have done it for well, it, the first day of weed, it was hard to get get free weed. I would have done it for a weed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one weed. But uh, so so, anyways, uh, yeah, we just hung out for like a couple hours and acted like idiots. That's it. And like people started like honking and shit. Like, yeah. and I I mean I I just want to say first of all like like five or six honks right like yeah noticed yeah but by no means were we sitting there being like we're the fucking shit like we're like idiots <laughs> and this is getting cold right so whatever next day i get up and i get to work and people are like have you seen facebook <laughs> <laughs> and i look and like it's eight in the morning i got home at like 10 maybe i think it hit like thirty four thousand. nice that time and i was like oh wow and it just keeps growing and there's this exponential thing that starts to happen. And, uh, I remember a friend of ours went viral for a video he made 
about, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but Colin, um, our friend Colin uh, Lockheed, <laughs> made a video of what happens when Canadians uh, uh, run around and... <laughs> <laughs> and like, like when Canadians lose at a sport and how we react to it, right. like, do we rage? Do we, yeah. do we gather on mass and break shit? And his video was so cute. Cause I think it was, I think it was over curling <laughs> and he reacted and he like kicked over his recycling bin and he was like, I'm sorry. And he just like picked <laughs> it back up. Like it's this perfectly Canadian yeah. video and it got big. Like TSN picked it up nice. and, a bunch of, and like. I remember talking to him about it, and it's a weird feeling. I don't want to speak on behalf of him, but like he, it, it's not the feeling you think you're gonna get. And then later on in the day, back cut back to uh, fucking my idiocy. I think it hit like sixty thousand, and I think that's where it, like it stalled there. But like you're just like, oh wow, every everyone knows about something you did. I'm like yeah. no one knows it's me. Like it's not it's not gonna come back. Like by no means. Well, now it is maybe. I don't know. If <laughs> but like. I, the point is, is it's a mini, small, very not big viral thing, right? But it's viral enough in my world that I was like, I'm not built to handle this shit. Yeah. Like, you know, so yeah, that that happened. End of story. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't want it. I just, I made videos when I was a kid on the VHS play. Like, I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad there was no internet. Like, I would, if it was on, like, it's there forever. That's why I don't like it. Well, that's that's the thing with this, right? Like we're all fucking normal people, right? Like we're not. We we're do this because normal-ish. yeah, normal. Well, normal. Yeah, we're, we're the bright side of normal. <laughs> um, with a lot of weird. But the but like we, we're we're not built for big media presence, yeah. right? We're not trained to have everybody's eyes on us, and that was a thing I thought of in my head before we even started this thing. Was like I'm. I'm a salesman. I work, I deal with movie rentals. Like I don't, I don't have any fucking podcast training. I don't have any media training. Right. So yeah. you're, I'm, I, yeah, like I, I didn't like it, <laughs> but you're like, you want to be famous, but then that's what comes with it. Yeah. So no, yeah. no for you. You, no, didn't, you wouldn't want to, I don't want to be famous. I just want the rich part so <laughs> she can get famous. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And like, I mean, the guy behind everybody who's really good at anything or girl, for that matter, the person behind the star is getting paid pretty handsomely. Yeah. So yeah, just be behind the pull yeah. the strings. Pull the strings. Well, I don't know. I want to just follow. Send her on tour and just yeah. be like, make money somehow. Yeah. <laughs> somehow we'll figure yeah. it out. <laughs> uh, what about you? Like, nope. Never, you know, never no? gone viral. Um, no. I just want to preface that I'm not being like, hey, look, I went viral. Like, yeah. I, I really no, need to. Cool. It, it just, it, it's just a thing that happened. Like, it's not a. Um, one time I made a TikTok video explaining how the Canadian election was going to work, like, and why we were in an election. And I, I drew a bunch of really cute pictures on my whiteboard. And I think that got like 3000 views. Sure. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, other than that, I mean, I've done some cool things. Like, uh, I ran in a, I ran in a federal election and I got, uh, I got the most votes of anyone in the party that I ran for. In, in our province, I got the most votes of any non-elected candidate. Oh, so I mean that's kind of viral in a way. It, well, it's an it's a it's a <laughs> awareness. People are aware of you, right? My name was on signs on people's okay, yeah, lawns, yeah, yeah. like all over. Just because it's not a video that's yeah. been retweeted and fucking looked at doesn't mean there isn't a viral sense to something now in the way because yeah. everything's video. People yeah. knew who I was. I was on Reddit and stuff. Some people didn't like me. Lots of people did, which was kind of nice. Actually, I don't think. I had a couple like colleagues who were running that kind of people were really terrible to them, but not at least not that I saw. No one was really terrible to me, which was kind of nice. Don't go into the comment section. I, you know, Dan was comment. monitoring the comment section for me, and um, maybe he just didn't show me any of the bad stuff. But there was a lot of good stuff, which was really nice. The the, the seemed like the worst thing people had to say about me was I don't know who she is, <laughs> and uh, and then there was a lot of people who were like, "That's the worst thing someone's saying about you." <laughs> yeah. So they have so much room to get to know you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of rope with that person. So then there you go. See, like so not viral that 
people didn't even know who I was. But viral enough to be talked about, viral enough to be critiqued. <laughs> like yeah. that's the thing. I, 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 I by no picture means. Picture was on the national news. There, yeah, that's right. It, yeah. I had a little interview that was on the news, and my picture flashed on the national news during the election. Okay, over do you know how weekend? many people watch the news? More people like than seven? they look at dumb fucking videos of me being silent Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it hasn't really resulted in anything additionally interesting in my life. No, but, but you've <laughs> been in a viral since, like being on TV. And then having in the hot seat, fuck, I made a dumb video and just like shook my head around and smoked like what people thought was a joint because why would you smoke weed for the first day outside? The <laughs> like that's just dumb. Yeah. But like. Is that yeah. really stressful? Like knowing that you have to behave a certain a certain way, like you could be on camera at any time. So you have to look a certain way and um, that anything in your past at any point could be pointed to as a reason that you're not good enough yeah, for you the job win. that you're you for. win you win <laughs> i thought you but, said it wasn't a competition yeah but the points do matter for <laughs> gloating purposes so that, that's about as close i've ever gotten um but i obviously didn't win so uh you know it's it's all it's all moo as joey would say sure you moo. <laughs> it's all moo cows don't care <laughs> the cow has, it's a cow's opinion it doesn't matter it's moo like I just, I just, you just see videos that have like videos, memes, all that shit like lives in infamy and, and like I, I wouldn't like TV and film having someone make a movie about like Richard Jewell, for example, right? The guy who, um, this is just popping in my head cause I saw it on Netflix before I, we started, but, um, Richard Jewell is the security guard that got blamed for the Atlanta Olympic bombing. Oh yeah. And how the media just like ridiculed him. But like, those are the those are the ones you go after, right? Yeah. Those are the, those are the ones that you do. And and sadly, they made a film about it that was an honest film that the media crucified him. But nonetheless, I think it's more adult to make a film about it, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna do something like this, in a way. But like, the video being leaked without your permission in any way, shape, or form is just. Like if it's uh. something being out there that maybe doesn't represent you the way you want to be represented and that you have no control over. I understand that being really potentially hurtful. Yeah, I feel bad for this guy. But like he's doing well, apparently, like in the, the rest of the article was him like using what happened to him is like a how to now he's, he's teaching kids how to navigate social media. Oh, like, that's good. Like because no one knows more than he does. Yeah. Right. He understands the algorithm better than anybody. He was a fucking victim of it first yeah. time around. Um, but like at the same time, like TikTok, yeah, like we do dumb shit on TikTok. We're just clips and shit. But uncut job, uncut job. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that was a riot. That was a riot. Watch yeah. a bunch of people who don't know how to TikTok try to TikTok at the same time. <laughs> I don't have TikTok. Good for you. I just good for you. I, I installed it once and I watched it for about a couple of days. I had it and I, I'm like, I'm like, it rewires your brain. And I'm like, I don't like it because I always have everything on mute. I don't want sounds coming out of my phone. So there's most of it. If it doesn't have captions, I'm not interested in it. Most people don't caption. I'm like, oh, this is just boring. Fuck, do I love me some captions. Some closed oh, captions. Yeah, gotta love a good CC. I, I, watching shows in other languages, I would much rather have the original language with the subtitles yes. than the dub. Oh, for, for sure. Because sure. you can hear the inflection and the yeah. intonation. Your face is moving proper with yeah. your mouth yeah. for your in- inflection of what you're trying to convey. Like everything lines up. <laughs> People who don't like subtitles just can't read fast. That's all. That's my. That's what I think. I used to have a bunch of movies on CDs from way back when. Yeah, uh, I know. And then you would watch <clears> that, and the sound wouldn't quite sync up. It'd be like a half second difference. Yeah. And so I learned to just not look at people's faces when they were talking <laughs> in the screen. Something would be happening, and they're talking. I'm like, okay, I'm going to look at the table. <laughs> just and then un- I can't. I can see them. Yeah, I can see. The, I, I can see them moving, but I can't you, see that it doesn't. What are you happen. watching? A movie? Like people look at that thing with the image pops out like do you just like oh like a like a 3d like, like a the 3d eye, puzzle eye trick is that how you watch movies sometimes <laughs> <laughs> just like that glazed over that's the weed <laughs> yeah that's, that's yeah it's the it's always the weed yeah all right well fuck viral like it's not a it's not a good feeling everybody like yeah. I, I being either political or as a dipshit like yourself over here like me um yeah don't 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 go viral unless, unless i don't you, know unless you want to unless you want to unless you got a really cool thing I don't. This makes whatever. Do whatever you want. I'm not here. We're not uh, fucking giving you. You're not my real dad. You know. Do what makes you happy. <laughs> Point is, is uh, that I'm rambling. Is that that's clearly the the cut cue sign to to, to wrap <laughs> this bitch up. So 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, listening to another episode. As we've mentioned a couple times, you can rate and you can leave a voicemail and tell us what you think. And we would love to hear what you have to say. Only if it's nice. Only if it's nice. Well, if you can disagree, (laughs) just don't be a dick, right? Like, I think we all know don't be a dick. You know what don't be a dick means, right? No dicks, Um, please. Yeah, don't. uh, Nobody ever wants an unsolicited dick. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So true. It's wiser words, man. Have never been spoken here. <laughs> uh, so so yeah, leave us a leave us a voicemail and be like, Dan said this. I really like that, and then we'll play it, and and then we'll we'll critique it, and it'll be fun, and you can be a part of this, and and all that stuff. Speaking of you, Winnipeg fans, the ones who leads the pack every week with who listens to us, that's awesome. Local local people like this show, and we love local people and people from India. I don't know if there's a school out there learning English, and if we're helping, it's the worst way to teach kids how to speak English. <laughs> oh, the man, they're going to have some interesting and colorful yeah. vernacular. I don't know what it is, but whoever's in India, thank you for listening to the show, too. You're, you're, there's Winnipeg and India. Those would, those cool. would be the, the, the top two places. Maybe, maybe there'll be some England now. Maybe, yeah. Hey, listen, uh, whoever's over there, that uh, we can make this happen more. We can, <laughs> we can have more of this voice here if that's what, that's what makes you... Tell the rest of the island to listen to us. Um, with that said, I uh, I don't think I can say anything else this week. <laughs> May 14th, uh, Handsome Daughter. We'll all be there. Dan will be there. I'll be there. Emily will be there. I will be there. I'll be there. And uh, we'll be masturbating. Fuck, I love saying that now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> we'll be masturbating for your listening pleasure on stage. Uh, all eight of us will be arguing what movie or series should have its own themed restaurant. And we've done this before, and I fucking failed it miserably. <laughs> like, it was some weird Michelin three-star restaurant where I tricked you into not getting your food because it's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going for experience. You're going to leave hungry. <laughs> confused, but entertained. Yeah, no. Everybody who listened to that episode is always confused and entertained. And I wonder <laughs> if that's the one where they're like, fuck listening to these guys. <laughs> That's the one that, whatever. So, uh, yeah, May 14th, 10 bucks, uh, live recording from the handsome daughter. Uh, it'll be fun. Uh, you can email us for, uh, for, for stuff if you want to know more about this. And, yeah, that's, that's about it. The real debaters at gmail.com. Follow us online. Uh, Instagram's best. TikTok if you want to laugh. Twitter if you only want to hear from us once or twice a week. <laughs> uh, Facebook if uh, you like getting uh, most of your information from an unreliable source except us. And yeah. Are we reliable? We're reliable within our world. We're reliable with what we do. I would trust us. I would trust us about everything on this episode and nothing else. <laughs> Although I, I did just say Moonfall was worth watching. So I think I might have lost my... My tr- whatever trust I had for my listeners. <laughs> Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Michael Petro. I'm Dan Bond. Emily Clark. And you're going to watch all the movies, kids, and we're gone. Bye. Say bye. 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 <laughs> and just like that, ladies and gentlemen, another Real Debaters production is in the can. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if this is your first, second, third, fifth, twentieth time, uh, thank you so much. But thank you to the first timers, the one who's the ones here who pressed play for the first time and took a gamble on us. If you like what you heard today, the easiest thing to support the show is just to subscribe, hit the like button, the follow button, whatever's in your podcast player. Make it so that we're always there every Wednesday for you, okay? That would be huge. Uh, If you want to stay in touch with us, if you want to follow us, there's a couple ways to do that. We're on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook. We're slowly migrating to YouTube by putting all of the things we've ever put on video onto that site. There's some surprises coming this year that uh, happened a while ago, but uh, I felt needed to be shared because they're part of the debater verse so the youtube page is coming but if you want to follow us it's at real debaters pod on twitter and instagram it's uh the real debaters podcast on tiktok all of the links 
All of the uh, one click away things are in the show notes that you've just listened to. So if you want to follow us there, that would be great too, because then you get to stay in the know of all the things that we do and where we're going to try to do this year and what we've done in the past, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, so that's that's how you stay in touch with us. If you want to contact us, it's therealdebaters at gmail.com. Uh, all the spelling for all these things is R E E L to keep with the title of the show. Uh, so you can send an email to us there, request an episode. Uh, want to call out one of us for being a goofball? There's there's places to do that as well, too. Like the Real Debaters website. You can email us or you can go straight to the website, rate us in Podchaser, realdebaters.ca. Uh, and if you really, really liked what you heard and you want to support the show in, in, in some fashion that requires you spending money well we got a couple ways for you to do that as well too you can uh you can buy our merch at the prop shop it's a store through threadless and uh it's online and you can order stuff we've got tons of stuff we've got our mass debater wear there it's our signature original and only line uh it's all of our it's our logo on everything so you can support us that way go to the uh, the merch tab in the show notes or if you just got a buck and you're like, hey, I want to give you a buck and donate it to your cause, there is a tab in the show notes as well, too, that says donate to the debater verse, I think. And if you click on that, well, it takes you to our donation page where you can donate like one, three and five dollars and you'll get something for your one, three or five dollars. Any more than that's just ludicrous. Uh, Luda. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's just kind of what I wanted to tell you that what I said at the end of the show. This is what you should listen to because this is all about who we are and and now that we've we've gotten to where we are, uh, we want to interact with you guys more. So these are the ways to do so. This is the way to stay in touch with us. Thank you to everybody again who's listened to the show. Again, you pressed play, you took a chance. Um, that's cool. So. Without further ado, I, uh, this is where I said I would talk more, so ha ha ha, it's eggs on your face. Uh, no, I got nothing else for you. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week, and watch all them fucking movies. Bye-bye. <laughs>